University of Notre Dame. Its campus landmarks are among the most recognizable in the world. These familiar images evoke memories of glory's past and see dreams of future triumphs. Its aura, its mystique are legendary. Fan or foe, there's no denying the specialness of this place. Adding to this mystique is the success the Fighting Irish have had the last two times the number one team visited South Bend. 1988, the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes came to town and Notre Dame jumped out to a two touchdown lead. Miami battled back, needing to convert a two-pointer for victory, but fell short and left their number one ranking in South Bend. 1993, the Florida State Seminoles also came up short and left their number one ranking behind. Today, number one ranked Nebraska pays a visit to South Bend, and Irish baseball are buoyed by the fact that the Cornhuskers are winless in three previous visits, and their coach Frank Solich is 0-3 on the road against ranked teams. Can the Irish continue to build on past glories, or will mystique, aura, and tradition fall short against the power and speed of Nebraska? a bowl type atmosphere here at Notre Dame as over 80,000 fans are jam-packed this historic stadium in South Bend, Indiana. Hi everybody, Craig Minervini with Pat Hayden. Great to have you with us here at Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish come off a huge win last week against number 25 Texas A&M, but indeed the ante is raised big time this week against number one Nebraska in a matchup that links college football all the way back two of the all-time greats. Certainly, Pat, it's a hot ticket here today, and the Irish are looking for a hot hand in their backfield. Yeah, they're really looking for a spark from Julius Jones today, the sophomore tailback who will get his very first start. Big stage for Julius, but he's really played well in his year and a half here at, at, at South Bend. Now, Bob Davies said we need some home runs out of him today. That's why they're getting the start. He's the most dynamic player. They need a couple of big runs out of Julius. When you look at the Cornhuskers, the prototypical Nebraska player is probably the offensive of linemen you know we don't we always talk about quarterbacks yeah. and you know wide receivers we should be talking a lot about offensive linemen today and Nebraska offensive linemen they deserve to be talked about these guys are stars you know 505 yards rushing last week none uh, yard lost uh, in the rushing game you know at the end of the game maybe the quarterback gets the MVP but the offensive line really set it up yeah they are the cogs but the key to the machine is certainly the quarterback Eric Crouch we may have to slow mow him today to keep him in focus because this guy can flat out fly yeah, simply put he is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate not his first trip to Notre Dame he came here as a junior in high school in their summer camp was the fastest player in that camp he's probably also their toughest and most competitive player and Notre Dame does not want to see him carry the ball on the edge of the defense the Fighting Irish are getting set to take the field it's the 151st consecutive sellout here at Notre Dame Stadium the fans ready for what should be an exciting matchup a good chance for the Irish to try and keep that mystique alive against the Cornhuskers the crowd is a bevy of not only Notre Dame fans here Pat but also Nebraska fans as well a lot of red in the crowd I have never seen so much opposing color at Notre Dame Stadium in 25 years there is some green here too <laughs> but some of the fans will be arguing back and forth rooting for their team as the Irish get psyched <laughs> The opening kickoff is coming up in just a moment. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. And then Irish, and let's go down to the sidelines with our Bob Washusen and the head coach of the Fighting Irish. All right, Craig, thanks very much. Coach, you said all week the key to stopping Notre Dame, stopping Eric Crouch. How do you do it? You mean the key to stopping Nebraska? Nebraska, excuse me. Is to stop Eric Crouch. There's no question about that, and that's, that's easier said than done. But you know what? We've had a chance to practice against an option-style offense. Uh, we certainly know what's coming. Our kids just have to go out and execute and play. You know, I, I told our team we don't have to be the best team in the country today. 
All we have to do is be the best team in this stadium today, and I think we're going to give great effort. I'm excited about this challenge. How about Arnez battle last week, now moving forward to this week, a different kind of opponent? Last week's over. It's all about one game at a time here at Notre Dame. I, I talked to him before the game. He's confident. He feels good. So let's put the ball down. Let's go see what happens. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you very much. Craig, back up to you. Thank you, Bob. The weather for this afternoon here at Notre Dame, 80 degrees, a lot more comfortable than a week ago. It is still humid, 67%, a little bit of a wind, mostly cloudy over the stadium. And the fans here, it is shocking as you look at the players getting ready because Notre Dame might feel a little bit like they're in a road game, a very unusual thing to say right here at the home stadium. Nebraska had only 4,000 tickets allotted, but obviously yeah. they picked up a few Some more Notre Dame items. fans sold their tickets, I'll tell you right now. It's incredible. Uh, more red than green. Gives you a real bowl-type atmosphere in that respect as well. Notre Dame will receive the kickoff. Dan Hayden Felt will do the kicking for Nebraska, making his 2000 debut today. He's a sixth-year senior. And here we go. David Gibbons on a return from Notre Dame. Gets a hole to the 20, breaking wide to the 30. And he's got down and near the 40-yard line as the Irish get off to a good start on special teams. Well, Bob Davies said to us yesterday, meaning we have a chance on a kickoff return. It should be a good play for us today. Tony Driver, number 25, leading the way. Really got a key block on number 16, Sweeney, to, to allow number six, David Gibbons, to get the outside. And again, special teams can really set you up in great field position, and they can win a ball game for you, particularly when you're playing against an opponent like Nebraska. So a big return, they'll start at the 41-yard line. The junior Arnez battle in his second career start. The stakes are raised this afternoon. On the fake, eluding over the middle, and it's oh. nearly picked off incomplete. Yeah, Jabari good. Holloway was the intended receiver. Well, you sense it's going to be a different kind of offensive game for the Irish, a little bit more uh, open than it was a week ago. But Des Moines Adams, number 98, did a great job of staying home. They have two outside ends, does Nebraska, that do a great job of containment. Their job, Adams and Vandebush on the other side, is just force everything inside and hit every blue jersey that comes anywhere near you. A conservative approach last week from yeah. Kevin Rogers. Interesting, he's coming out passing right away. This time they give Julius Jones for a couple. And they'll set up a third and about seven. The Notre Dame offense for head coach Bob Davey. The offensive line, the one rookie, the center, Jeff Fain. Other guys, juniors and seniors. The backs and receivers, Arnaz Battle leads the way. Jones getting the start. Lipinski, good solid fullback. Death Row Hunter, good speed. Touchdown for Hunter a week ago. Holloway, one of the quad captains, the tight end. Third and seven, Nebraska looking to hold here. Had a nearly picked off by Keo Craver. And a break for the Irish because had he picked it up, yeah. he might have gone for six. Nebraska is going to play man for man all day long against these Notre Dame receivers. And I don't think if you want to be running hook routes. And man for man defense, you want to be running crossing routes, running away from the corners. And that's an easy play for Craver. The ball was thrown late, though, almost a touchdown for Nebraska. Joey Hillbold, sophomore punter, had a good week last week. When, and Nebraska blocks a lot of kicks. Uh, ten last year, they blocked two field goal attempts. A lot of guys up here in the, in the line. Bobby Newcomb is back deep. Former quarterback who can also move. He will take it at the 15, up to the 20. Newcomb cannot avoid Chris Gura and makes the tackle on special teams. So, so far, at least on special teams, the Irish off to a good start. Nebraska's starting offense led by their outstanding center. We're going to look at Dominic Raiola. Yeah, he is a good one. Junior out of Hawaii. And it's a tough 
front line. Matt, you talked about it. Yeah, he's the best offensive line in America. Both Bonatti, Raiola, Hochstein, and Schwab. The backs receivers, Crouch leads the way. Willie Miller, good blocking back for Dan Alexander. 200-yard game last week. Newcomb Davison, Wistrom, an outstanding tight end who averages 28 yards a catch. Wow. From the 24. Crouch going deep. First play. He's got his man. Bobby Newcomb, the wing back for a big gain of 36 on the first play. How about this, Craig? Both teams, which are power teams, their first plays are pass plays. A beautiful fake. He was at two tight end formation, which they like to throw out of. And Bobby Newcomb, the quarterback from a year ago, does a great job of adjusting. First, a great release. You know, making Brock Williams miss at the line of scrimmage was a key to that release. And then a real good adjustment to the ball. Terrific reception. So Newcomb, who was battling Crouch, was the starter last year, quarterback for a couple of games, makes the big play from Crouch. Alexander finds a hole, left tackle, and a good one for Nebraska. Another good pickup, Brock Williams, on the stop of big Dan Alexander, the senior out of Missouri. Frank Solich also handles the offensive coordinator signals. They look for the, the Irish defense. Weaver, Wisney, Legree, and Irons up front. The junior is Weaver. The others are seniors. Boyman, Harrison, Denman. Denman's the leader at linebacker. Williams, Walton, Driver, and Israel. Walton getting his second start at the corner. And up up the middle again, it's Alexander. Craig, this, this offensive system really has been in place for, I don't know, 30 years at Nebraska, and it combines, you know, raw power, which you just kind of saw there, with some finesse in the option game, and then they kind of sprinkle in some passes. And in the passing game, they usually come up with a three or four big passes a game. We've already seen one to Bobby Newcomb. Three-yard gain. It's first and ten at the 28-yard line for Nebraska. This offense, you're right, Pat. They are like a machine. Last week scoring a five of their first seven. On the option, rolling, going for the tight end, Wistrom. He was defended well on the play that time by Brock Williams and Tony Driver as they fake the dive up front, and he was rolling wide. Well, Eric Crouch a year ago was so 52% thrower, but he is most dangerous when he's running the ball. I mean, this guy is a flat-out sprinter, 10.400 meters in, uh, in uh, high school. And I think the other thing, he is just tough. I mean, he takes some shots, bounces right up, and run off 20 yards the next play. Hey, you have to if you're an option quarterback. Wait to the last moment. This time he gives to Alexander, and B.J. Scott snuffed it out. The nose guard for Notre Dame, the senior from Brookville, Indiana. Yeah, last week, Nebraska didn't have one negative play. That offensive line was that good. So, but th that time, great penetration by B.J. Scott. Those are the kind of plays they need. It looks like Grant Irons, number 44 uh, down, a starting defensive end for the Irish. Grant had a problem last week. He was dehydrated with the heat reaching over 115 degrees on the field. He left in the third quarter. They're going to need, Notre Dame is going to need a lot of defensive linemen today. So we'll tell you about Grant Irons when we come back in a moment. We're scoreless early on from Notre Dame. Make a Notre Dame game is a weekend of activity. The Leprechaun at the pep rally last night, they had to move it to this stadium because yeah. they had so many fans. Now, now here's a down Nebraska didn't see often. Third and 13 at the 31. Fake again, untroubled. Crouch gets away. Here's where he's troubled, but he's packed up. The Notre Dame defense again doing the job, and it was Anthony Denman, the outstanding linebacker. Yeah, Tario Harrison gets to him first, but again, this is a very uncomfortable down for Nebraska. Third and 13. Didn't see it all last week, saw it rarely a year ago. Notre Dame decides to come with the blitz. Harrison, the linebacker, beats his man like a you know running back, put a little move on him, and then Denman finishes him off. Lost seven yards, two bats, so no thought of a long field goal here. There's another thing you don't see often, a punt from Nebraska. <laughs> Dan Hayden felt. Well, boom it and try and no, well, he tried hit. to catch it at the two, but he really yeah. did boom it. You can't punt that one in the end zone. They gave too much yardage to, uh, to Notre Dame. They didn't pick up many yards at all in the exchange, only about 16 yards. So Notre Dame will go on offense from the 20. 
Fans go in depth on the Fighting Irish by logging on to MSNBCSports.com. Click on NBC's Notre Dame Central, which features player profiles, game highlights, audio interviews with Coach Bob Davey, and expert, of course, analysis oh, from yeah. Pat Hayden. Uh, MSNBCSports.com, the official website of NBC Sports. Good uh, opening defensive series for the Irish. It was not a good offensive series on the first possession for Notre Dame. Option, battle will keep. They'll get about three yards in the play. You know, Craig Adams, Adams made the tackle. Craig, if, if you have to play the number one team in the nation, which Nebraska is and, and deserves it, this is a good time if you're Notre Dame. Yeah. You're, you're playing them at home. You've just come off a big win against Texas A&M. And, you know, you're playing them early. We talked to that man, Bob Davey, about that yesterday. And he echoed those thoughts. If you have to play them, of course. Yeah, they'll play, <laughs> prefer not to. They'll play them next week at uh, next year at Lincoln to open up the season. Second and six, they gave him four from the 24. Inside handoff, Jones, left tackle, finds a little room. He gets first down yardage. He was stopped on the play by Deion Booker. Good run by Julius Jones, a guy who can make something happen. Sophomore out of Virginia. The thing that Irish like about Julius Jones is that although he's got the capability of breaking off 40 and 50 yard runs, he's not afraid to take it inside. Good offensive line surge, 52. Fain, Jim Jones, the left guard, number 55. Bobbers there, but again, a patient run by Julius Jones. He doesn't try to make every run 40 yards, but he's capable of doing it. This is more Notre Dame football, too, the one to set up the pass. They're trying to keep the Huskers honest. Battle circling. He can run. Looks oh. over the middle, nearly picked off again. He was going after Dan O'Leary. Carlos Polk. Carlos Polk nearly got it. That's almost That's two. three. Yeah, three. You're right. I mean, the last week, Arnaz Battle didn't have anything nearly intercepted. He's almost had three balls intercepted in this first quarter. And number 13 right here, he's the, the Carlos Polk, the, in, the inside linebacker. I mean, this guy is an active guy. He's 260 pounds, but boy, can he move around. He plays very close to the line of scrimmage. Blitzes a lot, but that time in pass coverage. Talked to Carlos this week. He said, I don't like that movie, Rudy, at all. <laughs> that was not very... Not many Cornhuskers did. No, yeah. they did not rent that at their local store this week. Second and ten. Whoops. Let's see who jumped. Flags all over the place. I, th I think what, what Bob Davey needs to do right now is kind of settle Arnez battle down in, in this passing game in particular and feed the ball to Julius Jones some, maybe run a screen, a draw, something like that. But right now he's, uh, he's throwing the ball a little wild and there's been pretty good coverage by Nebraska. Defense. Ruff's talking it over. Defense. Might be a difference of opinion. It is a Big 12, uh, Big 12 crowd. All officials. It is dead ball legal procedure against the Irish. They'll be backed up five yards. Looks like it was Kurt Vollers. Yeah, Kurt Vollers down in the right tackle position. Moved kind of early. That was easy. Des Moines Adams was rushing in. One of the lighter guys up front, number 98. He left rush end for the corners. Because as you notice, they angle in. We'll talk about that, Pat. The unique defense of Nebraska. Everything is unconventional about these guys second and 15 battle passing over the middle tipped yeah. again and this time it is picked off joe walker's got it walker will go down at the 35. well notre dame felt they could not be as conservative as they were last week against a m but if they're going to throw it they've got to throw it to some guys in the blue jerseys i'm into great coverage by Nebraska. And mind you, it's mostly man-for-man -man defense. Joe Walker, uh, he's their rover. They call strong safeties most places. But good rush inside. Bar number 90. And then Polk, number 13, gets his hand on him. And Polk right there. 13, he was the guy that really caused the interception. Blocked an extra point last week. So Carlos Polk has had a very good first quarter. So first and 10, 35-yard line. Crouch pitching out. The tackle made in the play by Shane Walton. Flag down. Flags are down in the play. You know, Pat, 
Coach Bob Davey, how many times do we hear no self-inflicted wounds, no self-inflicted wounds, holding on Nebraska, that'll help the Irish cause. And here, nearly got picked off a couple of times. First yeah. series get picked off after making some good defensive stops. Yeah, and, and I think, as we said, trying to get your quarterback settled down, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, get your running game going, you get, you know, you get, get your running game going, or you get uh, a couple of screens in there to settle them down a little bit. Get them on the ups. Again, uncharacteristic uh, kind of down in distances thus far for Nebraska's offense. We saw the third and 13 a while ago. It's first and but 19 or 19 now. From the 44. Nebraska coming off a 49-13 win over San Jose State. Again, they did not play well defensively. Option crouch. This time pitching. Buck Halter getting outside. Picked up about five yards in the play. Brock Williams and Terry O'Harrison, linebacker, made the stop. Okay. Both teams are playing a lot better defense than offense early in this ballgame. He's kind of said to some good, solid coverage, some good, solid hits. And your quarterback in the options always going to take some hits. Low pitch, a team that had 25 fumbles a year ago, many of those on option plays. But good defensive play once again by Notre Dame. Again, second and 14. And Nebraska's used to being in second and four. Grant Irons, by the way, back in for Notre Dame after leaving the yeah. field right up there. Yep. Second and 13, 38-yard line. Crouch going for the bomb way over Davison's head, who was cutting inside. Shane Walton was on the coverage on that good split end, number three, Matt Davison. A little bit surprised with that great offensive line. Uh, Nebraska hasn't been mashing a little bit more. Yeah, there was the penalty they got them back in first and 19, but that is what they do exceedingly well. Frank Solich, the offensive coordinator, as well as the head coach, with a great offensive line. Really, Pat, both teams sort of going away from their normal right. personalities. You expected that a little more from the Irish. They feel like they have to force the issue third and 13. And Nebraska likes to screen it here. Crouch way back to pass, sets up the screen. Got Buckhalter to the 30. They stopped him short of first down yardage. Tony Driver, good stop. The free safety who comes off the career game of 10 tackles last week. And an interception is career high. Then Notre Dame's defense has made a statement, I think, in these first couple of drives, Craig. Hey, you're not coming in here to, to their stadium and getting blown out. I mean, you know, Nebraska can overwhelm you early in a ball game. And I think even if Nebraska goes on and wins this ball game, I think Nebraska, Notre Dame's defense has made a very early statement. So it's fourth and four. And yep. they're going to go for it instead of trying what would be about a 47-yard field goal. Well, you got to think Eric Crouch is going to carry this ball. Josh Brown was one for four between the 40 and 49 a year ago. Doesn't have a good leg in terms of the distance. And Notre Dame has taken a timeout on this big fourth and four early in the first quarter. Notre Dame and Nebraska scoreless back in a moment. The other thing they like is to get it to Bobby Newcomb on quick screens. Galladay near side tight end. Wistrom the far side tight end. Fourth and four. Remember the speed of Crouch. Straight up the minute. Nope. Crouch is hanging on. Crouch has got it and Notre Dame can't get him. Right near the line, it's going to be close. I, I think he's short. I think he's about a yard short. It was, a, you know, the old naked bootleg for Eric Crouch. You see how tough he is. With great speed, broke one tackle, but he's a yard short. Yep. Boy, it looked like they had him about the 35, yeah. Pat. He squeaked free, but not enough, and a Notre Dame defense with a huge stop. Yeah, fake the ball up inside, and a good head fake there by Crouch. Again, the defense then stays at home. That's Weaver. And then Anthony Devin gets a pretty good shot at him. And then Tony Driver, once again, who started off having a pretty good game here. Here's the first guy up here. That's Weaver, number 98. Crouch, you know, then Denman. There's two tackles missed, two tough tackles. And then Driver, number 25, finishes him off. Now the pressure back in the Notre Dame offense at their 26. It's first and 10. Battle on the gift. Tony Fisher is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Arnaz off to a tough start. 0 for 4 with an interception. Uh, Scott Shanley made the tackle. Yeah, and, and, and again, and, and Scott Shanley is one of those uh, walk-ons from Nebraska you hear so much about. And, uh, 
small town, St. Edward, Nebraska, 800 players or 800 uh, people. Dreamed about playing at Nebraska since the second grade. It's his first uh, year's a starter. Second and 11, 25. Arnaz keeping. He's squeaky, too. He's tough to bring down, but Theo Craver finally got him. Gain of a couple be a third and eight. Arnez battled. What an emotional story for him on his shoulder, his left shoulder of his brother who died at the age of three. His brother Brandon drowned in his grandmother's pool in November back in 1989. He said he used to carry around wallet photos of young Brandon but would lose them. And he had a tattoo put on his shoulder in memory of his brother, a person he thinks about every day. He said Brandon would be a freshman in high school today and probably would have been a better player. What a way to remember your young brother. Pass to Gibbons. A good one from Battle. His first completion. It's a first down as David Gibbons makes the grab. Eight-yard pickup on a big third down play. David Gibbons is used in a lot of different ways here for the Irish. That time just got a short little motion, didn't come across all the way the field, knew exactly where the first down marker was. He's a little bit like a linebacker. He's got that kind of size. 6'3", 217 pounds. They use him as a running back some. Good on special teams. And could be a, probably a tailback at most schools. Gibbons had the 21-yard touchdown. A 21-yard catch rather last week. Helping out the Irish cause in the comeback win against AM. and Battle on the option again. He's going to keep Stopped up around the 40-yard line by a host of Nebraska defenders. It was Randy Stella getting the credit for the tackle. Well, this is a well, great bowl. The defensive coordinator calls it kind of a you know un unusual, unconventional uh, kind of defense. Guys coming off the corners, incredibly fast. I mean, they got some strength. Look, look at that. that the, the fullback getting kind of hammered right there. But it's really hard to get in any kind of running momentum or. or against this Nebraska team because they penetrate so much. You need a couple of big plays. Second and eight from the 40-yard line. Single setback. It's Fisher. He's got it at the 40. Up near the 45. Joe Walker knocked him out of bounds. Gain of five yards. Yeah, that's a good, pretty good play by Joe Walker. A strong safety for Nebraska. I mean, that thing looked like it was going to go for a good first down easily, but this guy had an unbelievable year in 1998, kind of a highlight year, and three interceptions. One went for a touchdown, had a 99-yard kickoff return, a 73-yard punt return. Just an unbelievable year. Last week, again, they were 0 for the first seven on third down. One for two today. It's third and three at the 45-yard line. Split backs, Lipinski and Fisher. That was going to pass. Robbing one nicely, but Fisher diving. It's just beyond him. Pretty good coverage in the play by Randy Stone, the linebacker who pulled out with Tony Fisher incomplete, and Notre Dame will have to punt. Notre Dame calls this their wheel route. And last year, Tony Fisher had a big year as a receiver. 18 catches, a couple of long catches for touchdowns out of this. Just wasn't thrown out and far enough to the sideline because he had the man actually beaten. One of those he'd probably like to have back, Pat. Oh, absolutely. I think he said he, he complained that the ball slipped out of his hands. Now, Hill Bull, the punter, cannot or should not punt this ball in the end zone. Joe Walker is back deep. Walker is senior. Hill Bull will get it about the 30-yard line. They just get the snap off. It's a boomer. Walker's going to let it go and hope to take a Husker bounce, but it doesn't. Punt. It's oh. an Irish bounce. And the mystique alive for at least a play here for Notre Dame, a 50-yard punt. It, it looked like he was playing with a balada the way that thing backed up. <laughs> All right, it'll be first attempt at Oscars when we come back scoreless at Notre Dame. Fleet, good year now, has three blimps in the United States, two in Europe, one in South America, and one in Australia. One of the key early stats. Eric Crouch, two rushes for minus three yards. This is the fourth all-time leading rusher at Nebraska as a quarterback, and he'll probably be the leader perhaps by the end of this year in that department. 16 rushing touchdowns a year wow. ago. Notre Dame has played well defensively in the first two series. Crouch the handoff. It's Alexander. 
only a yard or two is again one of the early stories here pat the notre dame defense is not getting caught up in any number one hype today ordinarily nebraska's offensive line is so quick off the ball these guys and they just kind of you know get on you so quickly there's usually huge running lanes Alex but if you can get to, you know if you can get to alexander early in the run he doesn't have a lot of make you miss they're only averaging 1.8 yards per rush Last week, they averaged over eight yards, and Alexander had a 208-yard day. Alexander again, just a couple of the right tackle, and again, Anthony Denman. We talked about him being the leader on the defense for Notre Dame, makes the stop. Then they'll bring up a third down, probably about six for the Huskers. You know, the, 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 the Nebraska generally is so effective by giving you that fullback or that power play inside, and then they fake that fullback and get crouched on the perimeter, and then all the big plays come on the perimeter of college football. But, but, but what Notre Dame has done is really taken that inside away. Davison will flank out wide to the left. The tight end on right side of the line is Aaron Galladay on third and six. Slotted back. Crouch looking Davison's way. Deflected at the line. It's incomplete. And there goes Grant Irons, I think, who got his hand on it. Yeah, he, he's hurt. Grant Irons might have hurt his, it looks like he hurt his shoulder a little bit. But I'll tell you, another three series, yeah, three good defensive series by Greg Madison's team. Uh, a, a really a good play by Grant Irons. Had people at his feet. It was going to be a quick out. Fought off the, the you know, the, the block down by his legs. Gets his hands up and tips the ball. That's how you get interceptions, too. Good play by Irons. His brother Jerry Leonard to Nebraska back in 91. Not hurt. sure how Jerry's take on the game is here today, being a former... Husker. Julius Jones will get it at the 50-yard line. Got some room down the sideline. 40. Knocked down at the 35-yard line by DeJuan Gross. And good field position for Notre Dame. They'll take over on the 35-41 yard punt for the 14-yard return. Let's go down the bottom of the sidelines. Guys, this may look like just any old practice jersey to you if you don't know Nebraska football, but if you do know Nebraska football, you know what this is. It's a black shirt. This is the practice jersey given in ceremonies to all the starters for the Nebraska defense. It's so ceremonial and so traditional now that the coaches have a behind-closed-doors meeting where these are handed out to the Nebraska starters on defense, including a video team presentation of different Nebraska players talking about how special it was when they got their black shirt for the very first time. Well, right now, the black shirts for the Nebraska players have to come up big. What a Steven catch. Hunter made the catch for Marnez Battle as the Black Shirts couldn't come up with the play that time. It's a big gainer of 24 for Notre Dame. Battle to Hunter. Battle's warming up. Second week in a row, Javen Hunter has become a power forward. The pump fake, but Sweeney was not fooled. Great adjustment by Hunter. It looks like it's a penalty. It's going to come back, but nonetheless, great adjustment and uh, catch by Javen Hunter. Hold it against the Irish. As the Irish were celebrating, no one saw the flag standing at around the 37-yard line and a tough break for Notre Dame on the Irish. Well, it might be Jordan Black up here, number 78. Yeah, he's got him on the face mask. Yep. The old Heimlich maneuver on uh, Kyle Vanderbosch. The easy call. But, you know, you have to take some shots against the corners. As good as they are for Nebraska, it's man for man, bump and run all over the field. You know, man for man all the way around here. you got to take a couple of shots. Got to feel good for Battle, even though they lost the 10, to make the completion. He's gaining confidence, and here he goes again. Battle to the 40. Shake and bake 35. Randy Stella knocked him down. Battle is just getting a lot more comfortable running the offense. Big difference from the first series and second series. Well, it's a long game. There's going to be a lot of, you know, negative kind of plays. He's, but he's going to have to make ones like this. And when you're trying to settle your quarterback, a good runner like Arnaz Battle, give him a chance to run the quarterback option. Really, a quarterback draw is what it is. Good call on that down. It puts him in second and ten. Well, Bob Davey told us the big question he has. He loves his quarterback. Knows he's a, a young quarterback. How does he overcome a mistake? That's the issue. And so far, he's trying to overcome that early interception. The defense did the job. No points on the board for Nebraska. Way back, trying to find Terrence Howard there. And a 
screen that didn't really develop for Notre Dame. No, but that's the play Notre Dame planned uh, for a long time. A screen trying to match up their back against Carlos Polk, number 13, the middle linebacker for Nebraska. I, I think Polk surprises people. You watch him, you know, walking around, you see he's a big, thick-legged guy, 260 pounds. So he can't run. Well, he sure can run. I mean, he covered that screen perfectly. He tipped, you know, he caused the interception a moment ago. I mean, this guy is a good, good player. They are going five wide here on third and 11 of the 36. And, and there is some confusion. Trips to the left, twins to the right for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Battle. Well, he faked the throw, gets away. No, well, they're going to say... There was movement. There was movement before the snap. Good call. There was movement before the snap. I think... I think Where's the flag? Over there on the far side. Final yeah. snap. Oh, okay. Ball start offense. We play the down. Five-yard penalty. Penalty occurred before the snap. Tough break for the Irish as that play may have had first down written all over it. No, it, it was Another right. So I, I saw, I think it was Jordan Black moved early, the left tackle. It, it, it was an easy call for the line judge. Make it third and 16. Set up third and 16. You okay, look up here, number 78 again. Moving early. Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, yep. you know, yeah, that, uh, you know, th those guys, Vanderbush, you got him over you. You're anxious about his pass rush. 6'4, 260. And he can move, too. So, third and 16 from the 41. Battle spinning. Stella trying to run him down. Lofting wide open receiver. Getherall, but he actually was right on the line. And it is incomplete. Yeah, he, he's he would out have been out of bounds yeah. anyway. Oh, what incredible speed by Nebraska's defense, though. You know, Randy Stella, you saw him chasing Arnez Battle, number 34. He, he should be on somebody's track team. They, <laughs> they call him an outside linebacker. Was a high school running back, and... He is unbelievable. He used to return kicks for Nebraska, even though he's playing linebacker. He's close to breaking Gail Sayers' record long jump. Hmm. Back in speed. So on fourth and 16 here at the 40, Joey Hobone will let go of his third punt of the game. Joe Walker again back deep at about the nine. Hobone. Walker was calling for the fair catch. The ball bounces to around the 17. Nebraska will take over right there. Good punt again. Good punt. So the Huskers will go back on the O with 2.28 to go. It's 0-0 in Notre Dame. Craig injury on that deflected ball play. They've taken him back into the locker room to put a brace on that shoulder. He told the doctors he desperately wants to get back into this football game, and they're going to see if that brace will help them do just that. Right now, though, the Notre Dame fighting Irish defense out there without Grant Irons. In the meantime, junior Ryan Roberts will take over. Thank you, Bob. At the right tackle spot. This is a series, I think, I'll be surprised if Nebraska's offensive line really does not take some pride in this series and make something happen. And they've had three series, and the defensive front of Notre Dame has won those three first three series. They tend to wear on you, and Bob Davey was talking about how they impose their will on you as the game moves along. But so far, the will has been coming from the Irish on Nebraska, which is 62 total yards. Here's some yardage. Buck Alder taking it up near the 25. Well, and, and you see how quick Russ Hochstein, number 55, was the right guard. I mean, he, he's pulling lead in the way. Hochstein, number 55 from Hardington, Nebraska, right here. Now, he, he's going to get out in front. They got, he, he's looking for a linebacker. Any, any blue shirt he sees, got a, uh, got a piece of Ron Israel. But the thing about these offensive line, they are big and powerful, but they are very light on their feet. Buck Coulter is 3 for 15. He's got Jeb Davies, the fullback, who will take the hand up and rumble over the 30. Over the 35, Jeb Davies, the fullback freshman with good yardage and a first down for Nebraska. 13-yard gain. Yeah, they give the uh, the full bet, the ball to the fullback once every uh, lunar eclipse. You know, they didn't, they didn't carry <laughs> right. it a lot in Nebraska, but when they do, it's pretty meaningful. You, know, you, you pitch the ball, you pitch the ball, you run the ball outside, then you kind of feed the ball to the fullback. Good cut by Judd Davies, really a, known as more of a lead blocker. And Frank Solich said when he came into our campus, he knew what his role uh, as a fullback was, and that was to block. Isn't it a constant setup when you yeah. go against this Absolutely. Nebraska offense? They, they just send you one way, and... And you never quite know. It's a little bit of illusion. Crouch will keep. Crouch, you can see a motor. Look at him go. 50. Crouch breaking free. 
Cuts to the 20. Walton tries to catch him. He won't be able to do it. No flag, 62-yard touchdown for Eric Crouch. The flag after the play and the celebration, that'll tack on and make it a long extra point. Most likely we'll have to wait. Well, you, it must be a big game for uh, Nebraska because they score so many touchdowns, they ordinarily don't get too excited. So it must feel like it's a big game. Could be against Notre Dame as well. Personal foul. Oh, personal foul. Yeah. Now that'll be on the kickoff, I believe. And that, that's, a, that's a bad penalty. Allows you, it allows you to go for an onside kick if you want. You're going to pick up 15 yards on the, uh, on the kickoff. Josh Brown will kick the extra point. He had six of them last week. <laughs> Kickers are always active at Nebraska, you notice that? <laughs> Just comes with the territory when you put on the big red. It's good. A career long touchdown for that man, Eric Crouch. You know, Eric Crouch is going to get a, you know, a lot of pats on the back for this run, and it was an, indeed a good one. But Russ Hochstein, number 55, really cleared the way for him. Fake the option. Remember, they just ran the fullback to play before? They fake it to the fullback this time, and then you use the, first the power, well, actually the finesse of Crouch, then the power, then the speed. So Crouch gives you three different elements. 10 400 meter sprinter. And then that's that's the foul. It's gonna that's a stupid foul on mm. Shane Walton. It'll cost him 15. You know, and this is where I think, hey, you go for an onside kick, you probably won't be playing a, on, on the road you scored, but I think you think about it. Notre Dame is playing such a disciplined game so far. That's exactly the kind of penalty that is just an absolute killer. Especially when the offense is going to be challenged to go down the field 80 yards to begin with. You know, it, it, Crouch can really get you frustrated because you feel like you're doing a good job defensively. You know, you're stuffing the running back, you're stuffing the fullback for the most part. Next thing you know, he's going 62 yards against you. You know, he's he can be methodical and then he can be a bullet. So much for two carries, Pat, and minus three <laughs> yards. <laughs> this is average now. It's much, uh, yeah. it's much improved. Now he's up there, fourth all time. 25 rushing touchdowns for Nebraska. He's just eight shy of the all-time career mark for quarterbacks. Now remember, remember, Notre Dame had a pretty good uh, return on the opening kickoff, and Bob Davey felt this would be a, a good play for him. Dan Hayden Felder did the punting. will do the kickoff chores as well. Gibbons is going to take it from a couple deep. Up to the 10. Wide to the about the 18-yard line. John Gibson made the stop for Nebraska. And Notre Dame will take over with a long way to go. For more fighting Irish sports information, log on to und.com where you'll find highlights and audio clips of Notre Dame football's coaches and players. Plus, each week, und.com offers fans a chance to submit questions to a featured Notre Dame player. Und.com, the official athletic site of the University of Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame needs one of those home run kind of runs out of Julius Jones that Bob Davey talked to us about yesterday. He says he's capable of doing it. We need some of them in this game. Gibbons in motion. Lipinski, the fullback in front of Jones, who has the ball. Across the 20, 22 yard line. Tony Fisher. John Clanton, those tackle, backup made the stop. What incredible speed on this defense. You know, they have a, a real tough nose guard at Jason Lohr, number 70. He kind of locks down the middle. Carlos Polk doesn't let much happen down the middle. But everybody, other than that, boy, they are just, there's a track team. Second and six. Jones, there's a bit of a spurt for Julius Jones. Post the first down yardage, got up to about the 28, a yard shy. Okay. Finley, number 19, really stopped what was going to be a pretty big run. Clint Finley, number 19. Plays some rover, plays some free safety for Nebraska. Was a starter a year ago, and now with a concussion late in October. This guy must be a great athlete. He was a high school quarterback in Texas, recruited by all the uh, the big schools in Texas, A&M and University of Texas, two play quarterback, wanted to come to Nebraska and it's been a free and strong safety for them, a very good one. Yeah, he's a versatile guy. Watched Mike Brown, the outstanding. How many times we hear about yeah, Mike yeah, Brown, right. the rover from last year who moved on? One thing about 
Well, Glasgow, as you look, it's about a foot or so here in a big third down. They've lost six starters on defense, and if there's one spot Notre Dame felt like they had a shot, it was to try and exploit some of the younger players for Nebraska's defense. They lost Steve Warren, Big 12 defensive tackle. Aaron Wills, the starting rush, and a couple of the All-Americans we mentioned in the Browns in the backfield. Irish are going to let the quarter run out. Perhaps we'll see if they snap it before. They're going to let it run out. They should. Battle's looking over. And indeed, the quarter does run out. Notre Dame knew Nebraska was going to score a few. Let's see if they can get their offense going when we come back for the second quarter. It is Nebraska, thanks to Eric Crouch, leading Notre Dame 7 0. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. Bob Wischusen and our NBC crew at Notre Dame Stadium getting started for the second quarter. Pat, you knew Nebraska at some point they're going to score some points. Bob Davey told us that. I think he'd be happy giving up just seven for one quarter if you keep your offense going a little bit because they're going to have to score, obviously, if Notre Dame wants to stay yeah, in this game. I, I think if, if Notre Dame's going to win, they have to do two things. You know, one, to get Arnaz battle on the perimeter, but they have to cause some fumbles on defense, some turnovers. And got the first the middle. Lipinski gets three yards, but overall, Nebraska offense had some trouble against the Notre Dame defense yeah. in the first quarter. But, but one play by right. Crouch. That's why he's a Heisman Trophy candidate, and that's why he's playing quarterback. You know, a, a year ago he played some wide receiver. They moved him to quarterback. They finished 12 and 1. That was after winning a couple of games with Newcomb starting at quarterback, but they saw the skill of Crouch all along. So did Bob Davey. Julius Jones getting some yardage across the 35. Oh, white jerseys around the ball carrier. You notice that? It's like yeah. ants, on, ants on a sugar cube. I mean, whoop. Scott Shanley was the big ant right there, the sophomore out of uh, Nebraska. Watch Mike Gandy, number 69. He's going to come around, and then three white jerseys kind of engulf 69 in the ball carrier. And again, good team defense. Craig Paul, the, Paul, the new defensive coordinator there, played for Nebraska in the late 70s and uh, succeeded Charlie McBride after... 18 years. With 11 starters from the state of Nebraska. It's amazing when you look at their roster, how many there. Second and six. Not much happening for Lipinski up the middle. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the beauties of, of the Nebraska program, Greg, is the kids just don't go out of state. I mean, the, the football players stay in state. And when you have 10 in state players starting for Nebraska, the high school football must be pretty good in Nebraska, too. You know, Crouch is from Nebraska, Omaha. And Pat, we talked with the players this week growing up in the state of Nebraska where you follow the team on radio, the guys yeah. were saying when they were growing up. It's such an honor to wear that in that you probably, it's very hard to think of going anywhere else if you're that good. For Nebraska, you think you got to watch out for Arnett's battle on the quarterback draw here. Third and six, battle. Trying to break outside, got good speed into the 40, first down battle near the 50-yard line, and this time there are no flags, which has been hampering Notre Dame. Three penalties so far, 14-yard game. Uh, it wasn't a quarterback draw. It was supposed to be a pass, but Arnez Battle felt some real quick early pressure, found a little crease, and like a running back, like a, like a tailback, really, found a little crease in that defense. You can see some guys coming in here early. It steps up in, then avoids, you know, dips his shoulder, Tackle, sees exactly where the first down marker is. That's the key thing. You know, having, having the presence and, and the awareness of what you need to pick up a first down. That's what Arnaz Battle did there. Arnaz contemplated going to Notre Dame, but he grew up watching people like the Rocket Jerome Bettis, and he loved the tradition and the academic part of Notre Dame. That's why he came here. Jones on the inside handoff. Tries for the home, but he'll take the single, and a flag thorn might have been on the hit on Jones right as he went down near first down yardage. You know, it's a nice run, but I, I think Bob Davey was hoping for more. I mean, he said you're going to get three or four chances for a home run against this Nebraska defense in the running game. We've got to hit him. First of foul, 15-yard face mask. Face mask. Against Nebraska. That'll tack on five more yards to the play. Yeah, easy call. It was on Deion Booker, the free safety, number 14. First and 10, big play for the Fighting Irish. This time the penalty going against Nebraska and hurting the Cornhuskers. 
at the 25. A junior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Handoff. Jones breaks one tackle. Gets a couple of yards. Initially hit by Vandenbosch for Nebraska. And here's a guy who's playing with a chip on his shoulder. So yeah, Kyle Vandenbosch. Right. A guy who, you know, came to a camp, a summer football camp here at Notre Dame. Wanted to really be offered an early scholarship to come to Notre Dame. They didn't give him one. And we talked to him earlier this week. He, he still remains bitter about that. He had a chip on his shoulder. Looks like a professional wrestler with his goatee and shaven head. He's a pretty good student. 3.8 in finance. He's got brains and brawn. Second and nine from the 24. Oh, nice face. Battle keeping to the 20. Nebraska didn't pick it up at the 10. Down to the six-yard line. Keyu Craver made the stop on a terrific fake 18-yard gain for Harness Battle. It's a terrific call by Kevin Rogers. <laughs> Haven't seen this yet for the Irish this year. It was a similar kind of play that Crouch ran, tried to run for a first down. A little inside fake. Jay Johnson, number 11, downfield, doing a good job of stalking Craver, number three. But good call, great execution, a misdirection play. Again, when you're playing against such a quick defense as Nebraska is, misdirection will work. Well, the passing hasn't been impressive for the coaches. For the two for five for Crouch, one for eight for Battle, but both of those guys doing a terrific job. We're looking at, looks like Mike Gandy. He's the right tackle, a senior out of Garland, Texas, slow to get up here. He's, been, he's uh, played very, very well last week. Gandy, number 69, the right guard. Yeah. Here's the, the terrific inside fake. Remember, you, you just had uh, uh, Julius Jones with a big run. Everybody bites on that good seal block on the outside. Good block downfield by Johnson, the wide receiver. Gives you a first. 69 is there. Looks like he just planted on his right foot, came down awkwardly, but just jogged off the field, so it looks like he'll be able to come back in the ballgame. Mike Gandy is their best offensive lineman. Had a terrific game last week against Texas A&M. Sean Mahan, the junior, will back him up left guard number 79. Most of the rushing yards from the quarterbacks, 59 from Crouch, 52 for Battle. First and goal from the five. The gift to Jones. Up the middle for maybe a yard or two. Stella, I think, just drilled him, number 34. Randy Stella. They were talking to this guy about being a track guy. And again, built on speed, this defense, and boy, they are fast. Just an insane, you know, kind of a good discipline run. Again, uh, Julius Jones didn't try to break it outside, make it a, you know, long uh, run. But to Randy Stella, he can cover up a lot of mistakes by a defense with his outstanding speed. The smaller Jones is out, full house backfield. Howard, who goes 6-1, and Fisher are in. No, somebody moves. Somebody moved. We have a flag, oh, and it looked like, again, the Irish again costing themselves fat. Because Terrence Howard, yeah, you're right, Greg. Terrence Howard was wide open in the end zone. He was the guy who went in motion and uh, was going to be wide open for a touch. Now, wait a minute. If there was the encroachment and the Nebraska lineman hit the offensive lineman, we'll see. Offside. Offside. Nebraska. Well, you know, but e even so, even so, it's on Nebraska. Notre Dame missed an opportunity yeah. for a touchdown. It really did. The Watch, penalties are the other way, too. Yeah, huh? Here he is, the guy in motion. That's Terrence Howard. Watch how open he is going to be in the flat. The trailer is just too far behind him. And he stops because of the penalty later on. But early on, he just had such a lead on him on an angle, would have been an easy score. A power eye formation. Now Jason Murray slotting to the right. That's a penalty there, isn't it? Yeah, Nebraska's off. Handoff. Touch. Touchdown! There is a flag down, but obviously it's going to be on Nebraska's Tony Fisher moves in for Notre Dame. That's... It is declined, of course. Touchdown for Notre Dame. Tony Fisher and the Irish are a point away from tying this game up. Yeah, but be careful of, of the Nebraska on the extra points. Well, they blocked two of them last week. But nice response by Arnez Battle, the Irish offense. You know, Crouch tries to knock you out. They keep coming, battling back in an attempt to uh, tie the score. Good drive. Nice drive. John Crowther will snap it. Adam Tibble will put it down for the sophomore Nick Seto who took over the starting job in the fall camp. 
He's got it. The Fighting Irish have tied the game up. A classy looking drive, all rushes, capped off. 82 yard drive, capped off by Fisher. And Notre Dame is tied up the Huskers. We'll be back in just a moment. Clemson hovering over special events. Today it's the spirit of Goodyear carrying on that proud tradition. Goodyear Associates worldwide extend a blimp sized welcome to all college football fans. Any, any college player who looks up and sees the blimp, you yeah. know it's a big game. It's a big one. You know, you got number one, you're at Notre Dame. Coaches know it, fans know it, players know it. Bob Davey, it is the 26th head football coach at Notre Dame. In his fourth year here, six games over 500. He has to be impressed with that drive, Mr. Hayden. Yeah, a good response. Remember the, the drive before, Eric Crouch won 62 yards, but a more methodical drive by the Irish. But indeed, Bob Davey, you told him yesterday it was going to be 7-7, middle of the second quarter. I think he'd be very pleased. And he's got to like the way that things have worked out, where the Notre Dame defense has at least put a little doubt in Nebraska's mind. Nebraska knows they can hit the big home run, too, as they did with uh, the incredible Eric Crouch. Matt McNew, great soccer player here. On the kick, he can boom him. This one, though, will go out of bounds and give Nebraska an excellent field position to start their drive. Well, next Saturday at 1 Eastern on NBC, the tough schedule continues for the Fighting Irish. They'll take on... Interstate rival Purdue, the 14th ranked team in the country. That's Notre Dame and Purdue next Saturday at night here at 1 Eastern on NBC. From one Heisman Trophy winner to another. Drew Brees next week, Eric Crouch today. Can I? Boilermakers hosting the candidate. You know, Heisman yes. the candidate guys. They're hosting the uh, Golden Flashes of Kent State this afternoon in West Lafayette. The Golden Flashes? The Golden Flashes. Mm -hmm. Not one of your, your favorite clubs, huh? No, I like that. I like that nickname. <laughs> well, Eric Crouch again. Last time we saw him, he was 62 yards for a touch. He's got Miller and Alexander. Eye formation. Davison is the wide out moving to the left. Crouch will hang on. Man, is he quick. Over the 40. Good pickup for Crouch again near first down yardage. You know, he, he's a quarterback because he calls the plays, but he's really the running back or a running back because he's so quick and he's so strong. And a lot of times after he fakes the fullback, he'll just duck in right behind him. And they, they call it the design quarterback duck player, a quarterback iso sometimes, but and he's got some power. He's got a couple of the extra yards there. Nebraska records for Eric Crouch. It's like a sophomore season total yardage record, over 2,000 yards. Look what he did in that one game. In one quarter. <laughs> scored three different ways. Yep, caught one, threw one, ran one. Handoff, first down, Miller, the fullback. Denman on the stop. That was last year in the second game of the season. In the second quarter, in fact, Pat, it was within eight minutes. <laughs> he ran one, he caught one, and he threw one for a, no for a Nebraska record. And how about what Davey was talking about? He had him in camp here. That's right. As a uh, senior. Yeah, well, I guess junior summer, I guess yeah. it was, in the football camp. He said, hey, he was clearly the fastest guy we had here in our camp. He had these races with all the guys who come to the camp. And he uh, outran everybody. Ran irons again. But his tough day continues. First and ten. Ball on the west side of the 49. Crouch giving near side. It's Newcomb. He's a threat as well. Gets across the 50. They want to get Bobby Newcomb the ball. Dario Harrison made the stop. A gain of six for Nebraska. Again, power, 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 option, fullback, and then a little finesse. A little finesse, a little reverse to Bobby Newcomb. You still think about Johnny Rogers running those kinds of plays, don't you? I mean, I, I think that's one of the beauties of Nebraska. It's the same plays, the same offense for 25, 30 years. Frank Solich, the head coach, played at Nebraska. Five of his assistants did. You think of Rodgers, especially in this matchup. Last time they played, Rodgers was a big man. Miller with picking up six. So Willie really Miller's the guy who just got married at Nebraska last summer, right? When yes. Kind of ate everything on his honeymoon. He went on a said, cruise. Yeah, went on a cruise and had six, seven meals, <laughs> meals a day. And you know, he said, you pay for it, you got to eat it. <laughs> the, the thing was, when he got back, Pat, he was 15 pounds heavier. Yeah. Grant Irons makes his way out. The coaches looked at him in June and said, well, time to <laughs> stop the fun. Frank Solitz said and get back to your weight. And he went down from 260 to where he is about now, 245. Married Kimberly 
Cowell. First and 10 at the 40. Couple of yard pickup for Dan Alexander. Harrison and Sapp making the stop. Frank Solich, head coach of Nebraska. As he's mentioned, he played in the 60s for the University of Nebraska. Now he's not a big fella. Only 160 pounds, and look at this. He was actually on the cover of Sports Illustrated back in 1965. This came off a, it was the preview edition, but he had a 200-yard day yeah. for Nebraska running. He was the very first 200-yard rusher for Nebraska, and that was the college football preview edition for Sports Illustrated. That's a big deal. He's the 48th all-time leading rusher in his career. He averaged over five yards a carry, but that certainly was the highlight day. He got almost 20% of his yards in the one day. On the option, Crouch gave to Alexander. He was nailed on the play. Both Alexander and Crouch took a hit. Nebraska picking up a couple of yards. You know, Greg, I think one of the incredible things about Frank Solich and this whole Nebraska staff is the continuity in their coaching staffs. 132 years of experience at Nebraska. We're talking about at Nebraska now. And that's where we say it is a system. It's been going on now for 30 years. And everybody who comes and grows up in Nebraska, they probably know the play calls when they're in third or fourth grade. Third down and six. Nebraska 0 for 3 on third down in this game. Crouch rolling to the left. Has the option to throw over the middle. A little floater, but it's caught by Davison. It's a first down. Jane Walton made the stop, and there's the danger of the option. You have to respect the run so much. Davison left open for the catch. You know, it was interesting talking to Matt Davison this week when we were in Lincoln, and he was saying, you know, playing wide receiver Nebraska isn't necessarily the most uh, glamorous position, but you're going to get your opportunities. He said, it's really, for me, it's kind of like geometry, a game of angles. My separation from the defensive back, which he did right there from Shane Walton, that's the key. I've got to get myself in position to be able to separate from that corner. All the geometry. Matt says he's not the fastest or most, uh, most athletic, but he needs to use the head games to help out. Crouch on the keeper, rolling across the 20-yard line. Tony Driver made the stop. Pick up six yards, he'll set up second down and four to go. Tony Driver with a big interception last week against AM at the end of the game at a couple of interceptions uh, a couple of years ago when Drew Brees came into the stadium at the end of the ball game. Came as a real talented running back to Notre Dame, but he's played defensive back uh, this year and really a solid tackler. How about this lineup? You got 590 pounds of fullback leading Dan Alexander. And Alexander getting to the 15 with Davies and Miller in front of him. Two 245 pound fullbacks. That's a first down, driver and sack making the stop. How'd you like to stop those two guys? Yeah. You gotta fend off two big fullbacks in the power eye. Yeah, and those 300 pound offensive linemen. Now, yeah. now this is looking more and more like Nebraska football. I mean, kind of pounding it inside. You know, maybe you throw the ball a little hook to Davison once in a while, but get those big old offensive linemen. Raiola, number 54, a very athletic and unique center. We've talked about Hochstein, Swab, Fanatu, and Volk. Newcomb and Davison are wide left. The twins are to the left eye formation. Crouch on the option. He'll keep. Now pitches last moment. Fumble. Crouch going after it. Well, man, they have 49 fumbles a year ago. The, you know, the one blemish on a 12 and 1 record. They lost 25 of those. Many of those, as we said earlier, came on the pitch. The last second pitch here by Crouch. Yeah. And 55 again. Hochstein does a great job of sealing off the inside. A ball that looked like it could have been handled. Crouch again scampered on it before Rocky Boyman could get to it. The 6'4 junior redhead is he, out of is Cincinnati. He, is he wound tightly, Rocky Boyman? Yes, he is. <laughs> said, the Boyman said to us uh, yesterday, his dad is more nervous than he is about him playing. <laughs> That's a big fan been watching from Cincinnati for years. Timeout in Nebraska on this second and ten from the 15. Notre Dame Stadium, it's set to go here in the second quarter. Just got word that Grant Irons, this is a tough loss, Pat. The yeah. right end, the senior dislocated shoulder. The doctors say he will be out. 4.42 to go here in the second quarter. Just got word that Grant Irons, this is a tough loss, Pat. The yeah. right end, the senior dislocated shoulder. The doctors say he will be out for the rest of the game. Those Husker fans <laughs> put a little more butter on their corner yeah, after hearing that news. Corner on, on the cob, that's yeah. corner on the head. Second and 10. This is a much more characteristic drive of Nebraska. They won 62 yards in the last one. Miller in front of Alexander. Crouch, pitch option. He'll keep to the 10. 
Look oh. at the vision he has to look and fool you to the right, goes to the left, inside the five-yard line. Anthony Denman made the stop. Nice game by Proud. Just think how frustrating it is for Anthony Denman, number 39 for the Irish. He, he's a quick outside linebacker for the Irish, but he was trailing Crouch you know, almost his whole play. See right there behind him? Never makes up any ground, really. Crouch seven for 85 yards rushing and a touchdown. And remember, Craig, he scored 16 touchdowns rushing last year. So I, I think if you're the defensive team for the Irish now, you think, hey, first things first, let's stop Crouch. He, let's stop Crouch. He likes to keep the ball inside the 10. And he's had just 16 career starts. Crouch will keep. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's... Harrison helping the middle linebacker, 51. Denman as well in the tackle. Yeah, Denman got a full piece of Eric Crouch that time. Good uh, good scouting. You know, the Brad, or Notre Dame started preparing for this game last February. The first time they started looking at the 12 yeah. tapes of Nebraska. And Bob Davies said to us yesterday, Nebraska forces you to prepare early. They started in February, and they knew when Crouch gets down here, they, he likes to keep it. Well, it's early, and then there's almost a lifetime. I mean, we're yeah. talking February. February. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Man, yeah. second and goal from the fourth for a three-and-a-half-hour football game, right? Thirteenth play of this drive. Crouch on the option again. Bowman tried to pull him down, but he held him up enough for the tackle. It was Anthony Weaver who made the stop, but Boyman was the key man. Absolutely. Number 30, Rocky Boyman. And, and Rocky is his given name. That, that's not a nickname. And if you're a you know a defensive lineman or a linebacker Boyman, at Notre Dame, you'd love to have the name Rocky. Just kind of played off his block, stretched it out, got a first piece of him, and then Anthony Weaver delivered the, the final blow. And on third and goal from the five, Nebraska will call the timeout. They're just one for four on third down so far this afternoon. 7-7 seven, seven from Notre Dame Stadium. Pat, five for Nebraska. 13 plays, 12 of them have been runs. And again, this is where Crouch is most dangerous, but Notre Dame has done a good job thus far on this drive down here with him. Miller, the fullback, it's the handoff. Oh, boy, great change of place. Right near the goal line. Uh, I, say, I think if you have an, uh, an offensive line, short, I think it's going to be a little bit short, but I think if you have an offensive line like Nebraska, fourth down, even though you're on the road, I think you go for it. Let's see where the placement is, too. As you look at the fullback, which is a bit of a surprise we talked about earlier, getting the ball. I, I, you know, I love the call. Great change of pace. They are going for it. There's a two tight end formation in. We go Aaron Galladay comes in at 285 pounds of tight end, but I think uh, Frank Solitz believes his offensive line can get that much yardage. They are two feet shy. Crouch, keeper, touchdown. The plane of the end zone starts at the beginning, the very beginning, the white of the white uh, paint. So you don't have to actually right. go all the way across. As soon as you hit the beginning of that white paint, you've crossed the plane for the touchdown. I like the quick count here by Crouch. You know, it didn't give Notre Dame a lot of time. Yeah. It, wow. That was... Well, yeah, he got there in a little late surge, absolutely. He got clearly across the white line. And the first uh, surge, he kind of got knocked back. Yeah, that's a terrific drive. 14 plays, 13 runs. Josh Brown on the extra point. Eric Crouch on the keeper. Again, that great guile and gutsy effort to get it across. A long drive capped off, and the Huskers are back up by seven again. Huskers long drive now leading 14 to 7 with 224 to go in the half and near the conclusion of today's game we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund and the Husker fans and the Notre Dame fans enjoying what has become so far a very entertaining matchup you know, the thing about Nebraska and I've been watching them for a long long time over the years they, they you, know, you have to beat them. They don't take days off. You know, right. Bob Davey was talking about right. the same thing. I mean, you have to be able to manufacture a win somehow or other. They don't have a bad day. They don't have they run the ball as much. No. Unless you put Crisco on that ball, that's about it. Julius Jones will take it at the five. Oh, got some. Got some room. 20. Breaking wide. 30-yard line Jones. 40-yard line Jones. And he's near midfield. 
And there's your bet of the home run. Give him a triple for that one to the 50-yard line. Absolutely. Four or five opportunities. A 45-yard return by Julius Jones. You're going to see a really big lane open up here on the left. And you're right there. The, 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 the guy on the outside for Nebraska just went a little bit too wide. Now, you think with all the touchdowns Nebraska scores and the practice they have on the uh, coverage team, you wouldn't have let uh, teams have two big returns, but Notre Dame has had to. First and goal right at midfield. 2-11 left in the half. The one gross had a shot of them, too. Yeah. Auction to Fisher at the 50. Near the 45, he was pushed out by Scott Shanley, the sophomore linebacker. Uh, oh. Coming up on the Sun America Halftime Report, Bruce Beck will be in our New York studio with college football scores and highlights. Jimmy Roberts, an update on the Olympic torch relay from Sydney, Australia. That is coming up at the half. Now, Arnest Battle has to know the situation in the game, Greg. I mean, his team is down by seven points, two minutes remaining in the half. He has two timeouts. Yeah, you're trying to get in the score, but you do not, do not want to turn this ball over. Battle in the shotgun. Thinking about running, a nice spin move. He's going to take off. If he can get around the defenders, Joe Walker came up beautifully from his rover spot with the initial hit on battle, and he lost the yard. Well, there have been 27 plays in this quarter by both teams. 26 of them have been runs. And Joe Walker, the rover for Nebraska, is a guy that should make a lot of tackles. They funnel a lot of, a lot of ball carriers to him. Third and six. Three for six, third down so far. Got a screen out there. Oh, he threw it a little high for Fisher. And Tony could not reel it in, and there was all kinds of real estate open for the junior from Euclid, and that's another one they'll shake their heads on and wish yeah. they had back. Looked a little awkward, didn't it? I mean, uh, Arnez Battle just wasn't, uh, didn't have his feet underneath him, just to look a little bit uh, strange. Right he there thought. for him. Yeah. It really shouldn't have been a difficult play for him. So uh, very quick because they didn't use much clock there. They leave yeah. a minute and a half for these powerful Huskers. And Joey Hildenbold is on the field. Joe Walker back to receive. Booming punt. This one is going to carry way too far into the end zone. And that means no more. Well, the clock's at 124. And they're going to take over at the 20. Plenty of time for Nebraska. Tomorrow at 3 Eastern on NBC, it's the Subaru Gorge Games. Tune in to some amazing athletes take it to the limit in some of the most adventurous outdoor sports, including extreme kayaking, mountain biking, and one of Pat's favorites, kiteboarding, which he enjoys on the West Coast. Just to name a few of the Subaru Gorge Games tomorrow at 3 Eastern. And you know, you're, not a, you're not a kite I think guy, anybody but? who plays special teams <laughs> should play in the Gorge Games. That's it. I mean, it's the same kind of thing, you know? And listen, we've seen that Nebraska score quickly, and we've seen them have a methodical score. 124 remaining here in the half. They have one timeout. Crouch given. Safety to Alexander. And the big back piles up to about the 25. Tony Driver again in on the stop. I think about one thing about Nebraska's offensive line, and we've talked a lot about them today, is the, how quickly they get off the ball. When the ball is snapped, I mean, it's like a course line. I mean, they're, they're powerful, they're quick. They got the nice guts going there, and you need that when you're offensive line. You got to push those guys away. But there, there are some really powerful guys. As a matter of fact, number 77, Tenoti, there, they think is the most powerful offensive lineman they've ever had. Are you surprised they're taking their time? Second and six, the ball deep. I guess they want to play conservatively. As crowds can get loose, no, I'm stop. Not. They're going to just use the clock. Yeah, I think I'm conservative. On the road, you're up by seven points. Absolutely. Going to the your defense is playing well. Take a seven-point lead inside. Show some respect, too, for the opposition. Well, I, I don't think anybody in Nebraska, some of the press people thought this was going to be a blowout, blowout, but talking to the coaches at Nebraska and the players, I didn't think they felt it was going to be a, a blowout. Third and two. I would think Bob Davies got to feel pretty good about the first half for the Fighting Irish. Nebraska certainly earned their last touchdown in that long 14-play drive, but they needed a fourth and goal to do it. Crouch back. He's going to throw it out with the clock running down final moments, and he throws it out of bounds, and that will do it for the first half of play. And he's thinking, what the heck, let me try one and see if we can fool him with Davison going wrong. 
So Eric Crouch with a couple of touchdowns, 89 yards rushing in the first half. The story for Nebraska, the Irish hanging in. Battle leading a drive. Let's go down to Bob Oshusen with the head coach of the Huskers. All right, guys, thanks very much. Coach, how big was that touchdown drive just before halftime Well, here? we needed that, of course. Uh, to get ahead again uh, we, you know we've had some good drives the last two drives have been good primarily on the ground we need to be able to continue to uh, control the ball in that manner our defense um, I thought played very well early we give them that drive but uh, other than that they've been playing pretty well we just got to keep them from getting a big play and we just got to control the ball adjustments for the second half what's Notre Dame been doing to frustrate you well they've been bringing up an extra guy you know we could go to our passing game but right now uh, we'll see how it works uh, we're moving the ball fairly well um, on the ground at times the option game has been pretty good to us with Eric keeping it and getting some things done there so we'll see if it stays like this and it stays tight we'll have to use some play action passes coach good luck in the second thank half you. Craig Pat back up to you thank you Bob we now take you directly to Bruce Beck and our Eric crowd certainly the story but the fighting Irish I think Pat have to feel pretty good about things one of the drives went the length of the field but it took him 14 plays and a fourth and uh, goal conversion yeah I think Notre Dame's defense that they have to be very yeah. happy with it right now Grant Irons is out they're going to miss Grant in the second half I think considerably but if they can just going to hang in there hanging there try to make it a, uh, a fourth quarter game let's look at the halftime numbers so far at Notre Dame Stadium the first downs Nebraska with a little edge but you look at the total yardage too most of those two on that big run by Crouch. Yeah, 62-yard run, you take that away. They had 100 rushing yards. And, you know, anything can keep Nebraska, say, maybe under 200, 250 yards rushing, you're playing pretty good defense. The time of possession similar, too. And the other glaring number, we thought Notre Dame might be passing the ball more so far. No success in the air with just nine passing yards in the first half. But Eric Crouch, as we expected, Pat, the story so far for the Huskers. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of everything from Eric Crouch. On this run, you're going to see some incredible speed. That, that 10, 400 meter kind of speed, a little bit of power there at the end. That got them off. A 62 yard run. That was 110 in the first quarter. And then, you know, a different kind of run. Kind of a little quarterback sneak after a long uh, drive, methodical drive. So we saw the quick play, quick strike capability, and then the methodical Nebraska offense. That was on fourth and goal. And you could see by the jersey that he earned the touchdown. 14 7 down to Bob Wushusen. All right, Craig, thanks very much. Coach, based on what you told us this week, although you're behind on the scoreboard, it seems kind of like the game you expected it to be. Well, I think we have to play better on defense. You know, they mashed us a little bit there in the second quarter. You know, they're running a fullback a little bit more than we maybe thought they would. You know, we're trying to take that quarterback away. You know, if we can play as good as we're capable on offense, I think it's going to be a good football game. I think our quarterback settled down towards the end of the first half. We got a chance to come back and win this football game. This first series is really critical to us on defense. They put 160 yards rushing on the board in the first half. Is that something that obviously concerns you? Well, they had a bunch of it on one big play with the quarterback on the option. They traded a tight end. We got messed up a little bit in our alignment, and they took advantage of it. Anytime you give up a big play, they're going to have those kind of stats. That first half is over. We got to go play this second one right now. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Craig, Pat, back up to you. Thank you very much, Bob. And, and Coach Davey echoing, Pat, the uh, sentiment about the start of the third quarter here as you <laughs> see the excitement around campus. Go, that's a big sign. Wow. That's a big house. On the blimp. That's yeah, a big house. Right. You need a big house to have that big a sign, right? South Bend, Indiana. The fans are electrified this wow. time of year Great on stuff. the Golden Dome when their fighting Irish take the field. This uh, matchup way back to 1915. Pat did not call the first game. <laughs> Contrary to what some are saying, they know they played there. 11 straight times in those days, but they have not met since 1947 here in Notre Dame. And the last matchup between the ends and Notre Dame came in 1973 at the Orange Bowl. Johnny Rogers had four touchdowns in a 40 to six Husker win. It was the last game for Bob Delaney and the worst loss for Ira Parsegian never in his Irish career. Yeah, but Ira, Ira turned it around the next year and won a national championship. Yes. But see, Crouch, that's the guy that Notre Dame needs to stop on this drive. And you heard Bob Davey talking about it just a moment ago. This opening drive is critical. It sets the tone, the, the feeling for the whole second half. So Notre Dame's defense has to really try to slow down Eric Crouch. And they're going to have to do it again without Grant Irons who went out with the dislocated shoulder in the second quarter. Matt McNeer. On the kick, again goes out of bounds. Did not want that to happen. Again, Nebraska will wind up with good field position to start off. First half, 
What do you make of those numbers? Well, you, don't, you don't see Nebraska punt much on their opening series, believe me. Last, last week they went 80 yards, and then they kind of got into a rhythm, and we saw two different types of, you know, drives. One was a three-play drive, and the other the 15-play more characteristic drive. So it's a team that doesn't seem to get discouraged, uh, you know, a team that, as we talked about a little bit in the first half, doesn't seem to have off days because they run the ball so well. They start at the 35, thanks to the kick. Out of bounds in the power line. In motion is the big fullback, Judd Davies. And up right up the middle to about a yard. Miller on the carry. Bob Davies was talking about the fullbacks getting the ball a lot. A little bit of a, a wrinkle from Nebraska so far. Well, I mean, if you're going to play against Nebraska, you'd love to say, hey, make the fullback beat me. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you don't want to have, have Eric Crouch have the ball in his hands 30 times a game. So I think on some of those option plays, their tackles actually go out wide so they are forced to feed the ball to the fullback. No gain of the play, second and ten. Miller and Alexander in the eye formation, twins to the left for Nebraska. Crouch on the option. He'll go to Alexander. 35. He's tripped up. Good defensive play. Ron Israel. A couple of yard pickup for Alexander. And that'll set up a third down here in eight. Yeah, again, not a not a kind of down Nebraska's used to third and eight. Well disciplined uh, defense that that down for Notre Dame. Israel kind of had the pitch man. They had their quarterback taken away. They had a dive man. And that's what the you know the option forces you to play off the disciplined defense. Big play here, third and seven. Nebraska was one for six in the game on third down. They've had their troubles on third down. Well, this is a guy that, that's uh, when you option, option. Can yeah. you option third and seven still? Or you pass it. Crouch. Trying to turn the corner and pass it. He turns the goal. Oh, Boyman got him again. Rocky Boyman showing his speed despite being 6'4", 239. And a big stop for Notre Dame. Rocky Boyman is one of those guys that loves everything about football. He loves practice. He loves training camp. I mean, he, he's a guy that would play at double headers if you had him. He'd play in the parking lot. And, and again, uh, maybe his dad's a little less nervous after that play by Rocky Boyman with a good closing speed by Boyman. Well, he's a big Reds fan. He's a baseball fan. He's like Ernie Banks. <laughs> Let's play two. Yeah, you're right. Well, I bet you Crouch thought he could outrun the big linebacker, though. That did not work out that time. Fair catch. Julius Jones. And Notre Dame will start on the 32-yard line. A 41 punt as you look at the redheaded. And is that a face of someone who goes to Notre Dame or what? Rocky Boyman has got a little Irish in his blood as well. The junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Captain of the high school track team, and he was a sprinter. Yeah, you saw why right there. First half uh, Irish possessions. He had got off to a real slow start. Just didn't look kind of in sync. Nebraska's defense can do that to you, but the 11-pay uh, touchdown drive brought him within seven. Battle. Quick handoff to Julius Jones for a few. Jones uh, with 37 yards rushing and eight carries so far in the game. Yeah, that one was running to darkness. There, there wasn't, there was no daylight there because there were about five white jerseys stuffing up every available hole. Bob Davey looking to get his offense going here. 22 and 16 lifetime. He's had some pressure coming off the five and seven season, losing four straight that last year, but the good win last week has the Irish feeling pretty good about things. Jones, he's wrapped up by Vandenbosch. Let's go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, guys, Grant Irons gone for the game, as you said, defensively, well, for the Irish, offensively, they are going to be without Javin Hunter for the rest of the game. He suffered a concussion in the first half. He is in the locker room. He will not return. Back upstairs. Well, Javin, a big man last week, got yep. a touchdown against AM. and had a nice catch in the first half to get called back, but a uh, big part of their offense were their top three wide receivers. Notre Dame is three for seven on third down, and here's third and eight. Shotgun battle. A fumble! Nebraska recovering. Stella on the hit. I think Notre Dame recovered. And I think Notre Dame got it. Well, hang on? Yeah, they did hang on. I think Fane kind of uh, grabbed on it. But I tell you, we talked about the speed of Randy Stella off the corner. High school running back. 
incredibly fast. He is number 34. He's down here, right at the bottom. Really, no one has to pick him. No one picks him up. I mean, Jordan Black, the left tackle, had an assignment. He had a defensive end, but a good design on the blitz by Randy Stella causes the fumble. Good recovery by Jeff Fain to quickly jump on it. The sophomore center. Both boulders back. Gets it off. Joe Walker coming up the field. Nope. Newcomb lost the ball. Went off Walker's hands right to him. Uh, Husker bounce. Another by the ball. Thrown backward, it appeared. It was two different fumbles, it looked like. It was Finley. Finley yeah. batted out. It looked like it was coming out of a pitching machine or something. <laughs> it shot up there like the, they use in practice. Well, the there wasn't much communication between the two deep men. I know they're innovative, but three return men in the same play? Yeah. Walker and Newcomb. And then the ball comes out. Finley's there to make the recovery. Whenever the Goodyear blimp is hovering above a game with its camera focused on an event, you know you're going to get a unique view. The Spirit is based near Akron, Ohio, also the location of world headquarters for the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. The first possession did not work out well for either team here in the second half. Huskers have the ball. Their second possession of the half, first and ten. Good field position at the 41 after the ball bounced around pinball style. And Alexander, again, is roughed up by Harrison and Driver. Alexander having a rough day getting going here, Pat. 30 yards on 11 carries. You know, when he's at his best, it's really when those big old offensive linemen give him a little momentum, a little room to, to, to get something going. But I think if you get him early in the run, he's not terribly nifty. He doesn't make him miss early in the run. And that's what Notre Dame has got some pretty good penetration. And so he hasn't had some of those uh, thundering runs that he had last week. He comes out of the mix here. Morel Buckhalter is in. Twins to the left, receiver to the right. Unusual formation, more of a typical football formation here from Notre Dame. But here's the option. Whistle the play, dead. Penalty on Nebraska, the 25 second clock appeared to run out on Frank Solich and the Big Red. We saw it a lot in the first half. We've seen it opening the second half. Some unusual down and distances for this Nebraska team. This will be second and 14 now. You know when you're the um, quarterback at Nebraska, you get you know you get a lot of autographs, right? You ask for a lot of autographs. Yeah. And you get asked. Yeah, Everybody's always recognize you. But we talked yeah. to Eric Crouch this week, and you know he said, "I was at a, a, a function with Warren Buffett, the Sage mm -hmm. of Omaha, and he got a." hat signed, a Berkshire Hathaway hat signed by Warren Buffett. Wow. Second and stuff. 14. And he returned the favor too, did he not? Yes. Oh, big hole there. Buckhalter oh. over midfield. He ran into Tony Driver who <laughs> drove him back, but a 17-yard gain for the second eye back, Corel Buckhalter, senior out of Mississippi. Good offensive line play. You know, Buckhalter made a nice strong run, but again, it's Finotti, number 77, coming around. Jason Swab, 65, kind of blocking down. And, and it's going to really stop by Tony Driver, but the offensive lineman really created a nice little running lane for Buckhalter. Now back to their 590 pounds of fullback in the I formation. Davies in motion to the left. Crouch hanging on, good fake to Miller, wide open near side. Wistrom at the 30, the tight end with his first catch of the game. He always picks up a lot of yardage when he oh, brings yeah. in the ball. Brock Williams made the stop gain of 17. Yeah, 16 catches last year when he averaged 27 yards a catch. And again, the, the tight end, when they get this two tight end formation, it really is a, it turns out to be a passing formation for them. You know, they, they kind of fake the ball inside, looks like an option. And here he comes, a little delay, wide open. And he actually had a couple of guys open here. Well, he's effective, too, in the play action, Pat. He sells it so well, keeps the ball down, you can't really see it. Well, if you're linebacker, too, believe me, you're worried about that halfback and fullback. First and 10, 28 guard line. This running gives up to Alexander, running left, up to the 10. Walton trying to catch him, can't do it, touchdown! Dan Alexander, a 28-yard touchdown run. As the Nebraska offense clicking, 
doing all kinds of things to mess up the Notre Dame D. Now, this was a good change of direction by Alexander. Sees it right there, right at the very beginning of the run. That time he did actually plan off that right foot, then the speed. You know, 245 pounds, the wow. biggest eye back Nebraska has ever had. Mm. And again, I, I give an awful lot of credit for those five offensive linemen for creating some holes. Extra point. Josh Brown is good. So Nebraska has three touchdowns on four possessions now. Alexander had just 29 yards his first 11 carries, but this one, the biggie, the home run he was looking for, 28-yarder for a 21-7 Husker lead. The Cornhuskers, the 1973 Orange Bowl in Miami. On that day, Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers showed why he was named the country's top player. He had four touchdowns in the game, and he left in the third quarter with 81 rushing yards on 15 carries. He also threw a touchdown pass to Frosty the Snowman Anderson as Nebraska rolled to the easy win, becoming the first team to win three straight Orange Bowls. It was the last game for head coach Bob Domini, who was replaced the following year by Tom Osborne. You know, when Johnny Rogers used to go back to accept punts, now I think there was unbelievable anticipation. I think everybody expected, yeah. myself included, that something exciting was going to happen. He was something else. Record four touchdowns. And then Tom Osborne took over, and what a run he had until Frank Solich the last three years for Nebraska. Here's Jones on the run. Jones at the 30. He may go. 40. Find the kick of 50. Jones. To the 20, a 100-yard return. No flags. <laughs> Bob Davies started Julius Jones at running back because he wanted the home run. He got the long ball, but it was on the kickoff return, and what a time to do it for Notre Dame. You know, I, I'm really surprised. Notre Dame has had three big kickoff returns against a team that kicks the ball off an awful lot. Only Tim Brown had more return yards in one season than Julius Jones. Set his extra point is good. It's a seven-point game again. Greg, this is the same return they ran just a moment ago to their left, and wait till you there's a tremendous hole. This is good scouting. You're going to see there's going to be a giant lane out to his left. And there's the lane right through there. And then all he has to do is a lane here. There is it's a little seal block. And it's just he and the kicker. I'll tell you, that is good scouting and then good execution by Notre Dame. You know, the offense was struggling. Defense just gave up a touchdown. How do you get back in the ball game, get your special teams to make a play? And Julius Jones has done it now for two years for the Irish in the special teams play. 100-yard return for Julius Jones, a sophomore tailback. You know, he may end up being the most explosive player at Notre Dame since Tim Brown. He's a pretty good return guy himself. So the fans celebrating with eight and a half left in the third quarter, and especially, Pat, with the offense struggling really to get going overall, to have it on the special teams, you're Absolutely. right back in the game. Absolutely. You don't have to have your offense march 80 yards downfield. That was the first career kickoff return for touchdown for the exciting Julius Jones. Although he has had some other returns for yep. touchdowns around here. Special teams can win a couple of ball games a year for you. Oh, Notre Dame had to call a timeout. Yeah, that's wow. that's uh, that's a wasted opportunity. A, a timeout on a kickoff. I don't I don't get that one. Wow. Well, Jones last year pulled his heroics on return. It was a punt return late in the game against Boston College when Jones took this punt. November of 99, and he took it 67 yards for a touchdown. Last time that has happened for the Fighting Irish, that was against BC a year ago. And here's today's bat. Yeah, uh, again, I think it's well designed. First of all, it's well designed because there aren't any white jerseys for the first 15 yards of the run. 
So they saw something in Nebraska's coverage because that's the exact same return he had a while ago for about 40 yards, this time 100 yards. So good execution, good scouting, good all the way around the special teams. Now, Athlon Sports Magazine. Uh -huh. How about this? Now, this is getting carried away. It is, but go ahead. Projecting on the NFL All-Decade team. Yep. Pick Jones is one of the two running backs along with Andrew and James. The NFL All-Decade yeah, team. Yeah, this NFL 2000 to 2009, right? Peyton Manning's the quarterback of that team. Yeah. Bob Davies said, you must have a good press agent, <laughs> Julius Jones, an impact play, but uh, well, you know, ever, ever since a great he, NFL. -er. When he walked on his campus a year ago as a freshman out of Virginia, Big Stone Gap, Virginia, I tell you, there have there been really high expectations for Julius Jones. Today he gets his first start, has done a lot as a running back yet, but certainly made a difference on the special teams play. Matt McNew. We spent four years in the soccer team here, and then kind of surprised some people because he actually had another year of eligibility left to play football for one season. Mm -hmm. Played four years of soccer, wrapped that up. He was their sweeper on their uh, on the Irish team. Played back behind the goal. Big tall guy, 6'5". They love his hang time. He also had three touchbacks last week, but he's been knocking him out of bounds today. Walker at the one. Oh, my. Walker trying to find some room, gets through the 20 to about the 23. Tackle was made in the play by Mike Coolsby for Notre Dame. NBC Tuesdays this fall, the Michael Richards show returning to NBC, starring in his first comedy is Michael Richards. This is going to be a fun show. The Michael Richards Show, America's Funniest Private Eye, this new must-see to Richards show Tuesdays this fall on NBC. Well, I just saw... Him. Um, Mark Saab from uh, Saab, excuse me, from Notre Dame on a special teams play, just get hammered. Mm. It's like lemmings off a cliff. I mean, that is, you don't want to be playing special teams. That pancake there, huh? Yeah. Oh. Eric Crouch. Good to the eye back. Alexander. And look at the, you talked earlier about that offensive line, and just, it's a mash. Yeah. And just moving forward. And pushing blue jerseys back two or three yards. Your swab number 65 and in his uh, Cirque 60 year. You know, they had a great history of Outland Trophy winners at Nebraska. Jacobson and 70 away right on through Aaron Taylor in 1997. And they have a couple candidates this year in the offensive line. The center, Dominic Driola, a unique kind of player, and right guard Russ Hochstein, number 55, both of whom will play particularly uh, well today. Particularly, particularly Hochstein. He has really been out in front. A Nebraska boy who said he would be the water boy in this team. That's yeah. what it means to him to play. And off Buckhalter in. Weaver made the stop. A few yards for Nebraska. Yeah, Ho Hochstein, when we spoke with him this week, was saying, you know, I, I grew up always wanting to play at Nebraska. I mean, it's it's an honor and a privilege to play here. You know, sometimes you, you, you hear that, it yeah. sounds kind of hokey, but, you know, he, he really meant it. Yeah. He was really passionate about it. Russ out of Hardington, Nebraska. Love his size and quickness. He was all Big 12 last year. Went to his first game at 13. Big third and one. Nebraska one for seven on third downs. Crouch get big hole there. First down. Ed Moore. Buckhalter getting the yardage. And you see the weapons they have. We talked about Crouch. Then you see Alexander run at you. Mm -hmm. back. Then you see Correll Buckhalter, a six foot, 225 pound high back out of Mississippi. Yeah, and, and again, it's hard to get a lot of penetration when you've got the, you know, the 300-pound line in front of you. But you, you mentioned all those guys, Craig, and, and, you know, Nebraska may go on and win this game. They may go on and win a national championship. They're certainly an awfully good football team, but their MVP, in my mind, might end up being Bobby Newcomb because he could have handled the switch from quarterback to wide receiver a lot differently than he did. It could have ruined this team. Mm. He had the, the job he always dreamed about, and then Solich made the switch third game last year. They're looking for Davison passing. Davison's open, 45-yard line, well thrown by Crouch. And that's the more of that setup we keep talking about, because when they throw the pass, you're not ready for it, and Davison makes a big grab. Yeah. Gain of 18. Yeah, Matt Davison talked to us this week about setting up defensive backs. You know, he comes out of the huddle on all the runs yeah. and tries to make it look a little different each time out of the huddle. Good corner route. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. But Davis did a great job, see, kind of selling the run, then he kind of comes out of the cut, then uses his body as a screen. He kind of, he, he can be almost a basketball player there as he screened number 42, Shane Walton, away from the ball. Pat, what do you do when you're the defense? You know you're being set up, but you still got to respect the option, and it's very hard to defend them when they play action. Here's Crouch right up the gut. Davies, the fullback, 
who had a 13-yard pickup in the first half, gets it one, maybe two. Lance Legree on the stop. It's power, then it's finesse, and then, you know, again, the sprinkle the little passes to your tight end, occasionally to Matt Davis and the wide receiver. Um, you know, it is hard to stop everything. And if they don't stop themselves, I mean, you need to really to beat Nebraska or slow that you need some help. You need a couple, of, a couple of turnovers. They protected the ball particularly well today. Miller leading Buckhalter in the I formation is Davison in motion to the left. Pair of tight ends as well. Crouch option. They'll give it back to Buckhalter. Defense there still squeaks through for a couple of yards on the second and eight. Well, Notre Dame's defense needs to make a play right now. It's third and what? About six, seven yards. I mean, they got a great play out of their special teams. But now they need to make a play right here. Force a punt. Buckhalter with seven carries, 42 yards. It is a little bit cooler this week. Is there a wear down effect, though? We've seen the long churning drive from Nebraska. I'd be surprised if you're, you, any, every team is not worn down by Nebraska. I mean, it, it takes twice as much energy to play defense. That's why we say, hey, on the, on, the, on the field too long on defense. Third and seven, two for eight on third down. Twins to the right, option crouch. He gives a late one, blocker in front of Alexander. Oh, Alexander man. with a tough hit. Oh, Denman. Anthony Denman, I think he got him just before the first down yardage. But it'll be fourth and short. We'll see what Nebraska will do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised Nebraska doesn't go for it. But nonetheless, Anthony Denman, an incredible collision here with Dan Alexander. Oh, man. I mean, again, Alexander's 245 pounds, and Denman knocks him backwards. That doesn't happen to Dan Alexander much. Dan... Hit hard by Denman. Denman says his most stimulating class is conflict and resolution. It's something you could take right to the yeah. field, too, right? Last time they ran a sneak in this situation. Let's see how they do the conflict here. Fourth down. Over the top is Alexander. He's got it. And he's going to pick up the first down. Tony Driver tried to meet him in midair to stop him, but a good fourth from the line, and Alexander launching for the first down. Yeah, you know, if your offensive line takes off and, and gets low, it's hard for those linebackers, DBs, to kind of leap over and, and meet the, uh, the the runner coming over the top. See, a lot of the t times, watch these guys, the, the offensive line, the little surge there, so it's really hard to get over the top to stop your runner. Two tight end formation. Yeah, John Bowling is on the near side. Wistrom on the far side. Power eye option. Yep. And look at that. Take the pass. Now throws it picked off off the hands of Davey. Shane Walton. And the power eye play action. And they were going for the fullback on a pass. And Shane Walton comes up with a huge turnover for Notre Dame. Eric Crouch picked off the deflection off Davies, and the Irish will take over after the big turnover. It's 21-14. Nebraska, that's a passing formation for them usually. And there's the fullback, Judd Davies, who comes out of the backfield. Now, he is wide open. I mean, the, the, the tight end, one of the tight end runs the corners off. In the fight, the ball just thrown a little bit high off his hands, and Shane Walton makes a big play. We talked about the defense having to come up with two turnovers. There's one of them. You know, the other factor, too, Pat, is that Bob Davey worried about that tight end. Obviously, the team knew twin tight ends. Watch the, They yep. go for the tight ends, and they throw to the fullback. Well, that's, that's good offensive scheme. It did not work out, though. The throw was off the mark. How about this number? Eric Crouch, last two years, four interceptions each year. This year, three interceptions already. A two last week, and then one today. So a big one for the Irish. They battled back. It was 21-7 not too long ago. They got the good kickoff return. Unbelievable one. And now they get the turnover. Fisher on the option. Not much to him. A couple of yards, maybe. Carlos Polk, the linebacker with the stop. Set up second and nine as you look at Carlos Polk, likable guy we talked to him this week. Grew up in Big Ten country in Illinois, but he always liked the big A. Yeah. And he followed to Colorado and Nebraska. A lot of people were trying to push him toward Notre Dame or the Big Ten. He said, nope. Dad's a construction worker. Mom a real estate agent. And he is a good student as well. Battle throwing. Holloway the tight end. And he nearly broke free. Well, Joe Walker's a big gainer for battle of the Irish of 25. Okay, the Irish this half have got a big play on special teams. Now they've got one in the passing game. You know, trailing.
leading by seven. The offense really hasn't been able to get much going this half until this play. Again, really, it looks like Nebraska's offense. You know, you kind of run it, run it, run it, then you throw the ball to the tight end up the field. But that was a real momentum changer for the Irish, and particularly for Arnez Arne Battles, a confidence builder. Arnez with just his second completion. Takes the handoff. He's keeping. And well played, and it was Lauren Kaiser, number 91, the senior defensive tackle, who did not let Battle get away. Yeah, you, you're right. Disciplined play by Lauren Kaiser, number 91. Amazing, really, that, that he is playing. What, a week a week before last week's game, had a appendicitis attack, mm. lost 27 pounds, went wow. from, you know, he's back to, I think, about 280. But still, it's remarkable that he played last week. Had the appendectomy on the 23rd of August, and he's already back but not quite as strong last week. They're hoping as the weeks go on, he'll get stronger and stronger. Second and eight at the 46. Battle, play action. Fisher's got a man wide open, and it's oh, boy, good knocked point. away. Incomplete Gatherall, but also open was Holloway, the tight end. He went for the flanker Gatherall, and it was knocked aside by Eric Sweeney. Yeah, you're, you're right. They'll watch this tape tomorrow, and they'll say, hey, you should have thrown the ball to Jabari Holloway. He chose to go outside, and pretty good throw, actually, but... Aaron Sweeney, number 16, just did a great job. I mean, you, defensive backs are beaten for the for a while generally, but it's the, the catch-up speed, the closing speed, and he could have closed that gap and knocked it away. Terrific play by Sweeney. That's an incompletion you can handle other than the, the Holloway factor. He's thrown well in the deep play to made a great play on it, but he did have Holloway for first down. Third and eight. Irish three of eight on third down. Some pressure. Battle getting away. Throwing a loose strong Holloway one-handed. Yeah, just and rushing. Not handle it. A little bit yeah. sharp for, for Holloway to handle. Just a little bit rushed. And you know, when you're getting pummeled and you're getting that kind of rush, sometimes you do rush yourselves. He kind of did a good job of escaping Jason Lohr, number 70. But boy, did he have Holloway. That's two, two plays in a row. He had Holloway open. He absolutely knows it. Let let a first down or maybe more get away with that one. First down that would lead to perhaps. He Kind of yardage you could have picked up. <laughs> Joey Hilbo's sixth foot of the day. Joe Walker is back at the eight yard line. Walker angles to the 15. And he's just going to take a little pick up there. It, you know, it looked like he had a fair catch. Yeah. It looked like he put his right hand up. Uh, I don't I think, see a flag, but I, I don't see a flag either. Oh, there it comes. There it is. <laughs> I thought he had his right hand up. A little indecision, you know. Don't give him uh, the wine list. Could be there for a while waiting for dinner. Huh? Invalid fair catch signal, return the ball, five yard penalty, first down. Well, Joe Walker, number 25, did a good job on special teams and at the rover position. Watch his right hand. It goes uh kind of goes up there. Mm. You know, as you look at that replay, yeah, I'm not so sure. He didn't sell yeah. it very well after he caught it because it looked like he was thinking fair catch himself. Back in a moment from Notre Dame. Good one, 21-14. Nebraska scored early in the quarter to go up 21-14 in the Alexander run. Notre Dame came back on the return. Now Nebraska will start at the 10 after the delay of game penalty for the uh, false fair catch. And up to Denman, a collision. Uh, uh, you you Denman. Denman's name, it's a collision. Let's go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, Craig, thanks very much. On the Nebraska sideline, first significant injury report from their sideline. Corral Buckhalter, who makes up that eye-back backfield with Dan Alexander. Hyper-extended knee. Right now, he's trying to walk it off. They're going to try to get him back in the game, but as of now, he's out. Back upstairs to you guys. Thanks, Bob. The beauty of depth for Nebraska is they don't miss a beat when they lose one of their eye backs. The other guy gets so much playing time. Does take away a little bit from giving a rest or a spot. Crouch has got some room here. 15. Oh, wait. Pitch a beauty to Alexander. Past the 20 to 23. Is that nifty or what? That, that is a beautiful thing. You know, it's a dangerous thing. That's why they turned the ball over some last year. But if you can run the option and make, make a guy defend that option way down the field, 10 yards down, you have something working. Man, often time, or most of the time, the option plays, the ball is going to get pitched early. Rarely do you see a pitch this late. But it usually means big plays. I think, was it uh, Brock Williams that kind of shaking yep. up a little bit? Williams, Number one. Driver ran on the hit. We got to have a courageous quarterback to do it. 
Wow, 238 yards rushing for Nebraska. You know you're going to take the bump because yeah. everybody's playing you as the runner. High formation, first and 10, 24 yard line. Alexander again, over the 30. Boyman on the stop. Uh, left side of the line. Uh, Finotti, number 77. Dave Volk, number 58. They pulled, led the way. I mean, there's a big hole there because those two guys, there's Volk, number 58. Finotti, number 77. Powerful player. Big hole there for Alexander. What Solich said about uh, Finotti, how powerful he yeah. was. He's from Hawaii. We're kidding with him saying that it must be tough to get the assistant coaches to recruit to Hawaii. He said, well, it is this time of year because it's a red eye there and back. Everybody wants to go in the sprint. Hand off for a couple of yards. But they're having success, too, Willie fast, Miller. recruiting in Hawaii. Dominic Willie Raiola, Willie the center, and I, I would think that sort of feeds on itself. Absolutely. I think they have five guys, actually, on the roster from Hawaii. They also have, as we talked about the walk-on program, 24 walk-ons here today out of their 88-man roster. Final moments of the third quarter will tick down before we get another snap. So Frank Solich and his number one Cornhuskers are in a tussle. But they lead 21 to 14 after three quarters. And we'll be right back after these words from your local station. Not so. A good one. 21 to 14 in this historic matchup. First time the Huskers have come to this stadium since 1947. And a big third and goal, a third and one rather, coming up from the 33. So far, the Huskers are one for two on the short yardage plays. Third down. Crowds will keep. That worked on the touchdown earlier. That'll work for the first down right here. And Craig, you know what I like about the call? It's a quick count. I mean, j just when you figure you're going to settle in and kind of grub in on defense and get ready for that third and one, boom, the ball snapped and you're gone. They've done that twice on the touchdown and on that third and one. You know, Eric Crouch is an, is an easy guy to like for offensive linemen. I mean, yeah. he's the, as tough as they come. I mean, we were talking last week to Russ uh, Hochstein, who said, I, I love this guy. I mean, he's tough. He's not a prima donna. He's a great leader. He's confident. He does it all. He's just a junior, too, from Omaha, Nebraska. Head off to Buck Alder for a yard or two. We talked about him getting Warren Buffett's uh, autograph a while back from Omaha. He's going to have to have his, his, his own moniker. You know, this the sage of Omaha is Warren Buffett. We'll have to have find some moniker for, for uh, Eric Crouch. Well, he left a couple of options open coming out of school. We mentioned that he went to the Notre Dame camp, went to Ohio State. But he said about here it was just a different atmosphere, a small town. Didn't seem right, and he wasn't sure if they wanted him as a quarterback. Bob Davey, who was his first year, drove him back to the airport. Crouch is from Omaha, Nebraska. People from other areas might not think of that as a larger city, but it is a little bit larger and more metropolitan than South Bend. And, of course, he plays now in Lincoln, a smaller town. But home for him. Right, for Brock, Brock Alter for a couple. And Brock Williams, number one, back in the ballgame. Brock Williams, we, talked, we saw him for the first time in a year last week. Off, uh, coming off a year suspension, changed his number to start uh, a new career, if you will, at Notre Dame. Good discipline. They've, you know, they've done a pretty good job on the pure option plays, Craig. You know, uh, forcing the pitches, that was crowds to pitch it. it. Notre Dame's defense has done a good job there. Pat, how about the amount of times in this game Notre Dame has forced the third and long? Yeah, unusual. That's big. It's very unusual for Nebraska in those kind of situations. They're generally in the no, third and one, third and two. So makes running the option a little more difficult from a Husker standpoint because you need a lot of yards to get the first down. Third and short, you can go either way. Crouch looking, throwing right. Davison, no, nearly picked off, but well played by Brock Williams, the left cornerback, and a forced to punt as they had a pass on third and long. Back-to-back -back plays by Brock Williams. This is why it's hard to play corner at any level. You know, he's up here. Watch him look, see him looking in. He sees it. As soon as he sees him, he drives. As soon as he sees the quarterback uh, pull up. But the play before on the option play, Brock Williams is the one who made the stop. And then on the pass play, Brock Williams knocks it away. Two good plays by Brock Williams. Brock Williams, a guy who had his problems last year, set up the entire year, breaking some university rules. Davey got him in the office, told him, actually kicked him right out of the yep. office. It's up to you. And what he has done, the way he's responded, Davey says is unbelievable. And he credits Brock's parents very strong for the support. And he's become a good player again in his senior year. So again, Ronald is back. Never 
Fakes the fair catch. Finds a seam further. 40 yard line get the ball. 50 fakes the kicker. He's going to the 40. He may go. Touchdown. No flags again. Return for a touchdown for Notre Dame in this game, and it's got them within a point. The 5'7 senior was pure speed, showed it there, and he also showed an incredibly nifty move on Dan Haydenfeld, the kicker. Set up for the extra point to tie. It's good. 183 yards in returns this half by Notre Dame. A touchdown by Julius Jones on a kickoff, and this time Joey Gethro, their normal punt returner, a guy who never fair catches. And he doesn't waste any time. A quick move there, picks up a nice block. I believe that was by Tony Driver. There's the move on Hayden Field right there. And then the guy's got remarkable speed. And this guy is tough. Two giant special teams plays. The move coming up, right up the middle. There's the move, back outside. Wow. And then a couple of Nebraska Cornhuskers had an angle on him, and Joey Gedrall just outran the angle. Boy, that's... You know, <laughs> I, I don't blame him for missing that. That was a heck of a move. Didn't lose it out to speed the move either. Absolutely. Wow. Look at the bench. We often forget that there are three phases of football. You know, we always talk about offense and defense, special teams. Uh, for the Irish, the second half have been remarkable. Second career punt return for a touchdown for Joey Gatherall. And on a day where the offense has not really been clicking after one good series in the first half, battle is two for 12 with an interception. The watching game's been pretty effective, but it's been the special teams so far that have bailed out the Irish and got them tied with the number one team in the country. Pick off Walker in a tie game, two yards deep. will take it out, try one return of his own. He's knocked out of bounds on the play. Jerome Sapp. Now, Nebraska is the number one football team in the country. And this is when you find out a lot about the number one team. The game is tied. It's in the fourth quarter. You're on the road, hostile crowd. And this is where a guy like Eric Crouch has to make some plays. We'll start from the 23. Bob Davey certainly sold it to us Pat, when we talked to him, that we're not out here just to compete. Yeah. We're not out here just to look good. At Notre Dame, we feel we can compete and win even this game. We know it's a tough task. But we'll see. A lot of time to go still, but so far, a good effort. Crouch in trouble. Denman and Boyman and the linebackers, a major effort today for Notre Dame. Yeah, Anthony Denman, number 39, has played phenomenally. That's Ryan Roberts. And we mentioned Rocky Boyman as well. But number 39 is right here in the middle. Kind of fights through some traffic like a running back and gobbles him up. Yeah, that was Anthony Denman. Crouch's leg was grabbed by one of the interior linemen as well in the play. Ryan Roberts, I think, got a piece of it. So here he goes, second and long again, second and 11. Crouch on the option, play action, trying to find one down the middle. And the Quarterback, oh, they throw the flag on Davison as Williams and Israel are all over Davison. Well, the, the it's Irish, unfortunate for the Irish guy yeah. because he was not open at no, all. That they, ball was going to be incomplete. He wasn't. And, and, you know, the, the Irish have been plagued by pass interference calls, really, for, you know, last year as well as last week. Defense, 15 yards. You know, if your quarterback's looking at this one, generally you say, hey, you don't throw this ball, the wide receiver. Right here has two guys on him. That's Davison, number three. He's going to run the post route. Brock Williams is there, and over the top comes. Yeah, they they knocked him down. Yeah, Ron Israel, number five. Israel was looking at the ball all the way. I thought that. No, I, I think he ran through him. You still have to but, get the opportunity to catch him. Yes, you do. He ran through him. I, I think it's a good call. I'm not sure Israel took notice of Davison where he was. He still looking at the ball and, and collided with him along with what they sandwiched Davison. 
saw a break for Nebraska. And again, the rush up the middle. That's the green. DJ Scott on the stop for Notre Dame. Yeah, Frank Solich. Yeah, Frank Solich. Uh, you know, th this is probably at the end. If he comes out with a win here, this is going to be a good, good game, a good learning experience for his team. I mean, the number one team in the nation. You know, going to a place like this, you find out a lot about your team early in the season. Both teams are getting a major lesson here today for themselves. A pitch, a good fake. Newcomb, he is shifty. Oh, well played, though. Shane Walton stepped up for Notre Dame on a shifty player in Bobby Newcomb, the wingback. Some really good tackling the last few series by the corners of Notre Dame. Brock Williams before, this time the other corner, 42. Shane Walt, another former soccer star at Notre Dame. Played his freshman year as all Big East, scored 10 goals, their leading mm -hmm. uh, scorer. And the big down here for Nebraska, third and eight. They are three for 11 on third down. Again, Crouch will come up tight. Drop back. Go on the screen. Rover throws his man at Alexander, and that doesn't have a chance even if he caught it. Great coverage and defense by the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They're going to get the ball back. I just think Nebraska is seeing some down and distance situations that they just don't have, uh, they don't see often. They're not comfortable in, and they didn't handle well that time. Very slowly developing uh, play at that time. Would you say it might be the one thing that can be disruptive to the to their style, their option style? That is third and long. Yeah. You're, you're not buying the, the option quite as well. Absolutely. Julius Jones is back. <laughs> not get there all this time. <laughs> Jerry might still be tired <laughs> after the last one. Fair catching with a man right in his face. Yeah, yeah. And there's a flag, yes, who was not given room to make the catch. Flag is on the one close of Nebraska. He had there caught it around the 23, I believe. Had that situation in last week's game where Gethraw was nailed. Had a situation where he was not allowed to catch yeah. the ball, but he took the price. That time was a real poor move. I think he's got Jennifer in the sound contact. Five yards from the first half. Ball will come up to the 30-yard line for Nebraska. As Julius Jones, and you can't blame Nebraska for trying to keep a close eye on these returners. That time it cost them five yards. Today's game, the spirit of Goodyear, one of seven airships in the Goodyear blimp fleet. Goodyear now has three blimps in the United States, two in Europe, one in South America, and one in Australia. And the blimp is capturing some nice pictures today on an afternoon day in Notre Dame. Terrence Howard for a few yards. The latest chapter in a, a storied history of two teams, two of the winningest teams in college football history. Some thought might be a bit of a mismatch coming in. Not turned out like that. Number 23 yeah, I Irish. I think any of the Nebraska players felt that way. Certainly the Notre Dame players did. But if you look at Frank Solo, do you think about Nebraska and the way they, they and Florida State really have dominated the college football scene over the last seven years? It's been pretty remarkable. Twin tight ends. Holloway O'Leary on the left side of the Irish line. The play action for battle. He's rolling, looking for the tight end Holloway. Well defended. Flag of the play, though. Maybe too well. Sweeney may have got a right hand on Holloway. Looks like it's going to be a pass interference. Well, I tell you, this Erwin Sweeney is an awfully good player. He might have gotten a hand on the shoulder of the tight end Jabari Holloway. Oh, the other one. Offensive. They're going to call it offensive. Yeah, Sweeney did it, you know. Looked like really, he did a good job. Yeah, he's, he's played pretty well all day in the passing game. Remember those guys going man-to-man. -man. So it's offensive pass interference, and how about that for a... Pass interference, offense, 15 yards, same down. Pass interference called against the Irish. Here's Jabari Holloway, number 87. Not offensive interference there. Uh, that's not pushing off. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know if it's somewhere else. That, that is not, uh, that 
That is not offensive pass. They may have called the pass offensive pass interference, yeah. but that's not offensive pass interference. Rough call for the Irish. Cost that's, them 15 yards. That's a bad call. Boy, they will not like that when they look at the tape. And such a critical spot here, too. Now it's all of a sudden second and 23. We haven't seen too many of these situations in the game. Quarterback draw. Battle back. Thought about the draw. Has some room. Up to the 20. Look at him go to the 30. And it's battle to midfield. Down to the 40 of Nebraska. They saw it. They had it, and they saw number three somehow fly through like Haley's common 38-yard pickup. Wow. You know, Craig, anytime you see a formation where you see so many wide receivers spread out, you've you, you got to be thinking or worried about a quarterback draw with Arnez Battle. I mean, he's got vision. He's got speed. I mean, he's not a quarterback right now. He's a running back and a pretty doggone good one. 38-yard big play when they needed it after the penalty. Good call, Pat. It's been a nice, uh, nice day going, 86 yards. The Huskers could have used your thoughts before that play. Well, I think they probably figured that one out, too. First of 10, reverse to the 39. It's Ketherow had the big return. He fell down, running into Mike Gandy. the lineman Gandy in front of him, and he picked up five yards. But you know why he ran into Gandy? Clint Finley, number 19, for the Cornhuskers, did a great job of just kind of uh, standing Mike Gandy up. I mean, Mike Gandy just hit there. There's Finley, number 19, but... He's the one that really calls that play. I believe this is Finley in here. You watch him. He's, yeah, he's going to come back out. Right there. Watch those guys. Uh, so it's a good play by uh, Clint Finley, the free safety. Nowhere to go. 35-yard line. High formation. It's Gibbons in motion. With the deep back, that's Howard for a few yards. Near first down yardage. I think he gave up about two yards shy. It'll set up third and two. From the 31, still long field goal range here for Notre Dame. Terrence Howard is one of three tailbacks that play a lot for Notre Dame. We've seen Julius Jones who started the game, Tony Fisher, a little bit of the option. But Terrence Howard is a smooth, powerful guy who can really catch the ball out of the backfield. And he is very, very smooth. Get him in some open space. He's got a great strike. And Third down and two. Irish three out of nine. And one for two on third down, short yardage. Full house backfield behind Battle. It's to the Fisher. Nope, he did not get it. He's nope. out about the 30-yard line. A tough call here for Bob Davies. 47-yard field goal. Nick Seta, the call. kicker, has only one field goal this year, 32 yards. And he is a new kicker. So he has not proven that he can hit the long one. It looks like they're going to go for it. Well, this is probably a pretty good time if you're going to use the timeout to use what Notre Dame has, two of them. You know, I think one thing that affects your play calling is Nebraska is so good at blocking kicks that it has to enter your mind a little bit. They blocked 10 a year ago. Yeah, you're right. And you got a sophomore kicker who's only yep. had one kick in his career. So, big fourth and one. Battle on the fake. On fourth and one, he's looking to throw. And he throws it incomplete. O'Leary was trickery they tried, didn't work. But O'Leary was open really early. Dan O'Leary, the tight end, was wide open early. Arnez Battle could not get him the ball because of some rush, some people in his face. O'Leary's down here. And Arnez Battle, see, see O'Leary at the bottom of the screen in here? He was open very early. Mm. You know, that's one of those plays on fourth and one in the play action. You have a guy, is he going to be wide at, wide open early, and you got to get him the ball early. Big play by Nebraska's defense. Finley had nice coverage. After battle lost his moment. How about the call there, fourth and one? Uh, you know, I like the call. Yeah. I think you, you got to get you got to get rid of the ball quickly. 21-21, 6.48 to go in the fourth. Special teams, 100-yard kickoff return in this second half by Julius Jones. And then Joey Gatherall, 83-yard punt return. So it's been a, a kind of an unconventional second half here for the Irish, but they put up two touchdowns via the special teams. And the Irish knew they were going to need all facets here, straight up, man for man. Might not be the matchup conventionally, but they have right, pulled right. off some of the tricks with a terrific 
returns, and the defense certainly has played admirably well against this high-powered attack. And up for a couple. But that's been the story. I've said it several hand off for a couple or two right, or three, right. and it's putting them in the second and long, third and long. McGree yep. and Harrison on the stop. What, what, we've only seen really Eric Crouch on the, on the you know, you look at the first and second half. Eric Crouch had that 162-yard run. But other than that, the Irish have kept him in pretty good check because they forced him to pitch the ball on the options. And, and then when he runs the veer option, they're, they're allowing him to give the ball to the fullback. So, again, pretty good design by the defense. 14 carries in the game for Crouch. Second and six. Single back fake. Crouch, he can run. He's going to, no, he's going to take a sack. Robertson, Boyman. And I thought Crouch could have taken and gone on forever there. He was actually looking to pass across the field, and he wound up getting sacked by the night at Notre Dame D. How about Robin Roberts? He's the one filling in for Grant Irons. Again, beautiful play fake by Crouch. He could have run, you're right, but they were going for the home run. Ryan Roberts steps in for Grand Irons. He gets some help from Rocky Borman. They first force a third and 12. 5.30 remaining in the ball game. That was that play Bob Davies has been worried about that the quarterback comes out on the option and usually throws to the tight end. Little shovel pass. Alexander has it, but he again runs in to the Notre Dame defense. Anthony Weaver and Anthony Denman on the stop. Is Anthony Denman had a good second half. Man. Boy, and, and now who's going back in punt formation is Julius Jones. Whether it's Julius Jones or Joey Gedrall, you have a pretty good punt returner. And the student body knows them. <laughs> so do the Irish and the Huskers. It's Jones back. Well, you know you've got a great punt returner, too, when you have the other guy. Gethro will return the touchdown. Jones is on the kickoff, and Jones is going to get another shot of the boomer here. Let's see what he does at the 20. Man, right at him, it's Dewan Gross. Good tackle, great coverage by Gross. Yeah, he is a really good special teams player, Dewan Gross. Penalty earlier in the game, but, you know, he should have really been blocked by Shane Walton, number 42, but come, goes right through the block by Walton and then just hammers Julius Jones. Good play by Gross. The game with the separated shoulder, but he has been a wild man up and down the bench, patting every single guy on his defensive unit on the back. Also, Bob Davey and the defensive coordinator both coming over to the sideline after that last stand, and they let the defense know that if the defense wins this game for the Irish and shuts out Nebraska the rest of the way, they'll probably be able to hang on. Back upstairs to you. All right. Rocky Boyman has been a big reason why they've held Nebraska to three touchdowns. And that is saying something when you talk about the Cornhusker. Oh, first and 10, 20. Julius Jones, four yards, maybe five yards to the 25. You talk about the importance of protecting the ball and security. Now it is really of ultimate importance. Well, the, the coaches here at Notre Dame make all the running backs, including Julius Jones, go to class, believe it or not, with a football in their arms. They sleep at night with a football in their arms and uh, seems to be working. Covered with a slippery yeah, sub for service. <laughs> Second and six, 25 option. Battle got rid of it nicely. Jones. Jones turns the corner. Flag is down. Got to the 35 yard line. Mm. Flag thrown in the defensive backfield. Yeah, that back Might judge. Some... It's usually they're going to call someone a tight end when that back judge throws that uh, flag. And, you know, it's a holding. He usually looks at the tight ends. Yeah. Hey, that, that officials back in center field, uh, middle of the field, on the, you know, the defensive side of the ball, their assignment is to really look at tight ends mostly, tight ends and outside linebackers. And Holding offense, spot foul, 10 yards, repeat second down. Battle did a nice job on the late pitch that time, getting Jones sprung, oh boy, but the holding penalty on, on Notre Dame will bring it back. Well, you know, second and 13, knowing the situation, Arnez needs to know it's tied up at 21. You, know, you, have, you have two downs to pick up that first down. Maybe you run that draw, screen, little trap. Just, you know, don't take a sack and certainly don't, don't throw the interception. Don't force the ball. Second and 13, five penalties for Notre Dame now, 49 yards. Shotgun formation, and there is some confusion. Battle on the pitch, shovel pass. Returned the favor to Terrence Howard, but he got a few yards. 
Huskers tried that one in the last series. Still going to be third and long. Yeah, but a, but a nice call. I mean, it's, it's kind of a safe little pass. Be, if he drops it, remember, it is not a, a fumble. So it would be an incomplete pass. But you, know, you invite everybody upfield in the shotgun formation to try to slip something underneath him. Nebraska played that very well. In fact, the defense for Nebraska, let's give them credit. They've done a very good job allowing just one touchdown against the Fighting yeah. Irish and really negating the passing game. Two for 13 for battle. Just 34 yards passing. They have to do it here. Third and seven. Battle's going to throw it. This one is way overthrown. He was hit as he was blitzed and hit hard as he was going for death of all. Vandenbosch put on the pressure, and Notre Dame will have to punt. Yeah, Vanderbosch and a couple of linebackers were all around on his battle. He really didn't have any, any kind of chance. Man-for-man -man coverage up here inside. You can see all the outside guys as well. It's just a matter of time to get to the quarterback, and, and you were hoping that your wide receiver, Joey Getherall, could just get to that post a little bit faster and give him a chance to catch it. Looked like he got rid of the ball cleanly, actually. Yeah. He was hit right after the release. I don't know if that affected the pass or not. Maybe he rushed him a little bit, however. You can sense the pressure. Oh, nice punt. Here's the punt by Hillbold. It is a good one. Joe Walker, 32. And the flag is called again on the reception as Clifford Jefferson came in and may not have given the yardage. There's so much excitement and anticipation in this game. The return man appear not to be giving the uh, receiving guys some room. You know, I think it's going to be awfully hard for a guy running down the field because, you know, you see the guy about to catch. You know it's not a fair catch because he didn't raise his hand, but just don't exactly know when the ball's going to arrive. Catch interference, five yards. It's going to be on Clifford Jefferson, number 15. You need to give the guy two yards. Close call, but, I, you know, it's, you know. You know, that's a rough call. That is a rough call. You're coming down to receive. The guy doesn't call a fair catch. There is some risk of not calling a fair catch. Right. It's, a, it's a tough call. But you, you have to give him two yards. You have, you have to, to give him two yards. Yard. He was right on that border. It's only a five-yard penalty. It's not a major issue. Either way, first and 10, 39-yard line. High formation. Alexander over the 40 to about the 42. Driver on the stop. It'll be second and six. Three minutes left in this ballgame. Tied at 21. Nebraska has all three timeouts and perhaps the best offensive line in America. But they're going to have to get a couple of big plays. They can't just grind it out. They're going to need to get Eric Crouch on the perimeter at least once or twice. Inside 240 now. On second and six, Alexander again plunging ahead. The Huskers ideally would like to use up that clock and rumble downfield for the chance to hit the field goal or the touchdown for the win. Well, their kicker, Josh Brown, his long is 42 yards, so they've got a considerable amount of uh, yardage to pick up to give him a chance. Now, biggest play of the game coming up right now with 2.10 left in the ball game, game time. If we're tied at the end of regulation, we'll go to the overtime, of course. Two minutes to go. Third and two. Alexander hit in the backfield Denman. again. Denman. Anthony Denman again. Denman again at the first stop, and now what do you do? You have to punt, don't you? I would punt here. You have to punt. Absolutely. Fourth and two, and it's a long two. But to Anthony Denman, he has been spectacular this second wow. half. Short yardage, long yardage, you know, inside plays, blitzing in the passing game. You know, as good as Julius Jones here, you may want to, I'm surprised that Joey Getherall is not back now. He's the guy that returned to, what, 83 yards for the touchdown. Julius went 100 on the kickoff. Yeah. Jones at the 16-yard line. Trying to find some room, somehow does find some room, but he gets up to the 30-yard line before Gross again brought him down. Irish will take over at the 30-yard line, a 15-yard return, 38-yard punt. To Anthony Denman, number 39, going to come from the inside here. There he is right there. And again, just kind of knifing in. 
that was a, he had some big plays this this game particularly the second half but none bigger than that one forcing the punt and giving the Irish the ball with a little bit over a minute to go in the game and two timeouts now for Bob Davey it's tough because his kicker although he was one for one last week he has not been tested much they're gonna have to move fairly quickly but they do have two timeouts battle lost to 30 Falls down at about the 34-yard line as he nearly ran into big Kurt Bowlers. And the clock is ticking at 52 seconds and moving. And they're really too far back to think timeout because they're on their own side of the field here. I, I still think he should be getting in and out of huddle. They have reasonably good field position. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised they're going to let this one run out. Are they playing for overtime, huh? Yeah, that, that's the way they look at it now. I'm not playing an overtime game, but just but what, 96. Yeah, you, get, you saw the quarterback draw. She could have thrown screens. There's some safe stuff you can do in these circumstances. Battle's going to keep. That's fairly safe. Trying to shake and bake. Gets to the 37. Jason Lohr in the stop. Crowd getting a little frustrating watching the seconds go away. The Irish may feel their best bet is to take the number one team to overtime. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. You have some receivers here in Notre Dame's case. But guys like Joey Gethro, you saw him on the, on the uh, punt return. I don't think you need to throw the ball over the middle. But you can throw them maybe a, a quick screen, one of those bubble screens, and give them a chance to do something after the catch. But they're going overtime. Did not want to risk turning the ball over. He's going to take his chances in OT. <laughs> Last game for Notre Dame in overtime was November 30th of 96 at USC. They lost 27 to 20. Last season, Nebraska won late in the year the Big 12 game at Colorado, 33 to 30. And here are the overtime rules, Pat. Point toss for the right to play. Yeah, you Each always team play will defense, get a shot. Right. If you win the toss, you choose to play defense, of course, so you know what your offense has to do. 25-yard line, you get a series each. If one of you scores, the other doesn't, game over. Each team will retain the ball by getting a first down or scoring. Repeat it until the winner is determined. You do get a timeout. New rule last year, beginning with the third series that you have. If you score the TD, you have to go for the two points. Pat, this game has been such a terrific game. It, it has kind of a, a spoiling way to finish it in, in the overtime, but this is how they do it in these days. Yeah, yeah, because I, th I think from here on in, it, it comes down so much to the kickers. Yeah. And from the 25, but... Nebraska is number one to hold on to the ranking, and they're undefeated early part of the season. They're going to have to knock off Notre Dame. We are going to overtime in South Bend. The comeback. <laughs> Nebraska won the toss, and I believe they chose to defend first. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what you want to do. You want to find out what you have to do on your offensive series. If the Fighting Irish kick a field goal, then you know at least, you know, if you, the touchdown wins it. It also puts the pressure on the younger Notre Dame offense to put something on the board. And keep in mind, 14 of the 21 points came from special teams. Yeah, and I think, you know, the biggest thing going into this overtime is two kickers that, you know, haven't been into this situation a lot. You know, Nebraska's kicker didn't kick last week. Uh, Notre Dame's kicker, Nick Seda, just uh, kicked one field goal last week. So... Something you don't see a lot in college football, particularly in a game of this magnitude. The number one team in the country, the number 23 Irish, all the tradition between the two schools. The Irish were a, a heavy underdog coming into this game at home. And it's turned out to be a beauty. And Bob Davey would love a home run from Julius Jones right now. First and 10, 25, Jones for about two, maybe three. Push back on the play by Carlos Polk, the linebacker who stepped up. Yeah, Carlos Polk has great vision. Remember uh, Craig Bull, the defensive coordinator, was saying about Carlos Polk this week. And, uh, he's a little bit like a running back. He has that vision, sees the hole, and he get, you know gets to hold just like a running back would. Oftentimes, the running back's on the other side of that hole. You're almost already in long field goal range, even if you don't move it any further. It's about a 40-yarder right now. They're obviously looking for the six, and they can get the first down as well. Second and nine. Give him just one battle. Oh, it's holding. Tight end got held big time. O'Leary. Now well, battle moving. Battle's got some room. Left side gets a block. Battle to the 20. There is a flag down inside the 10. Knocked down at the eight-yard line. It's a flag on Nebraska. Dan O'Leary, the tight end, was held badly. 
Well, if that's the case, they'll decline it. Yep. Take the uh, run from the quarterback battle. But let's see. You got it. Dan O'Leary, the tight end, was just trying to sneak out. He's right in here. Watch what happens. And this is kind of a pretty easy call. Yeah, Holy jersey on him. Defense. And, uh, good reactions here by Arnold's battle. But wow. One thing in a long season, uh, I would think, Craig, you, you want Arnold at this point to get out of bounds. You, you don't, you, you don't take, you don't take, you don't separate the shoulder. Get out of bounds. You're too valuable to this team. I agree great, with you, Pat, but I don't think they were thinking about No, he wasn't. <laughs> great impromptu play by Arnes yeah. Battle, a guy that can do that. And he was almost saying hello to Frank Solich on the other side of the side. <laughs> Came all the way back, got uh, a couple of great blocks, uh, and uh, didn't uh, let up when he saw the flag come down either, which is right in front of him. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Don't forget, Nebraska will get a shot, even if the Irish score. Gibbons was in motion. Jones got a little room right tackle side. Got to the five. Oh Kaiser brought him down. Second and goal for the five. There was a touchdown there saved by Lauren Kaiser. The tackle, number 91. There, there was a crease there that Julius Jones saw when he got that ball. And I saw from up here. I thought he was going to burst into it. But it was Kaiser right down here. Slides down and closes the hole. Watch the hole. See the hole there? Oh, boy, that's a touchdown if Kaiser doesn't make the play. Second and goal from the five. Lipinski is the fullback. Jones the tailback in the I formation. Receiver split left and right. Jones gets it up the middle, and he's met quickly by Carlos Polk. He might have gotten a yard, but a good play by 13, the linebacker from Rockford, Illinois. Yeah, Kaiser again low that time, Polk up high. It'll be third and goal. It's a long three. Boy, uh, again, I think it, it, a play with Arnez Battle having a couple of options. Run, pass. Now they get one timeout in the overtime period. A good use of a timeout there by Arnez Battle. So Arnez will come to the sidelines. As Nick Setter right there, the field goal kicker, a sophomore, may have the opportunity to put Notre Dame ahead. And Battle's going to talk it over. Well, he's not thinking field goal right now, I promise you. No. I mean, they're figuring, hey, how can I get three yards? And, and, and to me, Arnez Battle is such a dangerous guy, a little bit like Crouch on the perimeter. Get him, yeah, you just say no timeouts remaining. Get him outside. Give him a chance, a run pass kind of option. Maybe Craig, you know, where you can run it and throw it in. Now he hasn't been great on the touch on the pass no, block today. No. However, it does give you that option if somebody comes up. It might be the play that they will go with. Uh, there, he's only three for 15 passing in the entire game. Oh, yeah. We talk so much, Pat, about the mystique here at Notre Dame, especially against the number one teams. And look at their overall record against the number ones at home, three and three. But they come off two incredibly impressive wins over Miami in 88. And they made the gutsy two-point conversion try. Didn't work out. And Florida State. And Bobby Newcomb is feeling the pressure of a early season pressure of number one right now. Nebraska got everything you could have expected, everything the coach said about this game, and more. They hope the coaches, that the players bought into it. Gibbons in motion, third and goal. Battle in some trouble, he's caught back at the 11-yard line. Uh, Jerry Selecta, and that'll push the field goal back to about a 28-29 yard try. Great play by Selecta, number 56, but uh, Notre Dame was doing just what we thought, trying to get him on the front with a run pass option. Selecta got real good closing speed for a tackle. I mean, you, you don't talk about that much with a defensive tackle. And now the uh, the field goal attempt by Nick Setta. So Nick Setta, a sophomore, has one kick in his career, a 32-yarder good last week. Had a great preseason to earn the number one job. Remember how good Nebraska is at kicking, particularly these guys right there. 29-yarder left hash. Setta up and good. So Nick Setta, with a lot of pressure for a young kicker, hits the big one for Notre Dame. 
Now the focus goes to the Irish D and the Cornhusker offense. Nebraska knows they'll get it at 25. If they can score a touchdown, the game is there. It, it, absolutely. It's, you have to be thinking. Your play selection has to be thinking certainly about touchdown. You know, Nebraska has uh, guys in the back that they call the second row called jumpers. The guy up front are called grubbers, but you see the, the guys in the back, Vanderbush number 83 in particular, blocked three kicks last year. But good height by Seta, and they're up by three. Say, Seta is an incredible athlete, right? 6'10 height jumper in high school. 24-21. Nebraska takes over now at the 25, and they get one series here. Touchdown, they win. Field goal will force another series for each team. Crouch. He's on the keeper. Pitching to Alexander. And the Huskers have seen that, too, and all day long. Shane Walton came up to bang out Alexander. And, and once again, the defense forces the pitch. They said, hey, Eric Crouch is the best runner on this Nebraska team. What we need to do is force the pitch. Rocky Boyman, number 30, did that. And then Shane Walt comes up and stuffs the tackle. So uh, Nebraska has to call, I think, a quarterback designated run, really giving Crouch the chance to run. No option for him. No gain, maybe a yard now, second and nine, 24 yard line. Crouch is gonna pass. Screenplay falling, and it's incomplete. He was going for Wilson Thomas. A guy that the Notre Dame Irish probably wouldn't figure to be in the play. Shane Walton on the coverage. Here. Frank, hey Frank, I'm really surprised at that call. This is not Nebraska's strong suit. Remember, they're only down by three. You don't need a touchdown now, necessarily, right? Wow. Three points keeps you in the game. So, at a minimum, make sure you give your field goal kicker a little better shot. And that, that, that's a surprising call to me to force a third and nine now. They'll use their timeout, will Nebraska? They threw it at a sophomore who never had a catch in his college career. And they tried to fool Notre Dame because Thomas has not even caught the ball. And now you're right. They're looking at a 42-yard yeah. field goal. They don't pick up any distance. And they've got a kicker. Last year went one for four between the 40 and 49-yard line. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that that's not the point. I would take Crouch on the uh, on, on the option or a quarterback keep on the perimeter. Or at a minimum, run something inside to pick up four or five maybe to give your field goal uh, kicker a little bit more of an opportunity to have a chip shot. So now this becomes, you know, really critical play. Two things going through the quarterbacks in the coach's mind. Hey, if minimal, we have to pick up four or five yards to make it a little bit more reasonable, yeah. uh, it, it, you know, uh, field goal attempt. And then, you know, don't turn the ball over. You know, if you're going to throw the ball, don't force the ball. Maybe he's, he's thrown three interceptions this year. Three. They still have the option at third and nine. Right, absolutely. Quarterback draws. Any, anything with Crouch in his hand and the ball in his hand. See a lot of the rolls one way, throw back across the field the other way. Crouch six for 14 with the INT passing. And they're going to have three wide outs in this formation. Crouch will line up under center. Twins to the right, receiver is Thomas to the left. Single setback, Alexander, Crouch back to pass, straight drop back, over the middle, complete. Wistrom has got it. Oh, boy. And I believe he has the first down. I think he does, too. Great throw, patient throw by Eric Crouch. Wow. Yeah, they, that gets him the first down. Boy, Winstrom did a great job of running the route, bouncing off a linebacker. I mean, he was covered, kind of bouncing off a linebacker. He's number 87, the right part of your screen. It's a big passing lane there. They, the quarterback throws it away from the defender, the on-rushing Denman. A good throw and a good route by Winston. First and 10 at the 15-yard line in overtime. Notre Dame scored a field goal, their chance. Hand off, Alexander breaking free of Denman. And he picked up eight yards. Boyman helped to make the stop with Driver. But this is where Nebraska wants to be then, now second and short. Yeah. This is where their offensive line, it really is so good. Finotti, number 77, kind of dominating his guy. Big hole there. Dave Volk, Raiola, the center, did a good job of cutting his guy. Again, touchdown wins the game for Nebraska. Notre Dame does not get a second shot if Nebraska gets the touchdown. Crouch, he has it, go for the end zone!
I haven't Touchdown. seen I haven't seen a signal. Have you? I didn't see a signal, but the referees are running off. It is a touchdown, and Nebraska has won the game. Well, Eric Crouch, 16 touchdowns a year ago on option plays. Boy, did he get a good block by Dan Alexander, too. The Nebraska Cornhuskers in overtime, and fittingly on the shoulders of their leader, Eric Crouch, with his third rushing touchdown of the game for the second straight week. And this one is a crusher for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in a sensational finish here at Notre Dame. Well, watch the block by number 38, too. And not only the strong run by Crouch, but the, really the last block there by da Dan Alexander allowed Crouch to get in the end zone, who is as a, is a, is dynamic a runner inside the 10 as you see in college football. The last push. Yeah, Williams was knocked down. Walton, actually, his driver tried to catch him and couldn't do it. And what a great run by Eric Crouch. Let's go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, Coach, congratulations. That had to be as exciting a game as you've ever been a part of. Well, it was a great uh, football game. I thought both teams played uh, exceptionally hard for four quarters. No one gave up. It was a really a close one down to the end, of course. Uh, it did not look very good when it kicked that field goal, and we uh, had that third and uh, medium, and uh, we were able to pick that up. It was a key play uh, to keep that drive along. We have uh, so far last year had one game like this, and we were able to pull it out in overtime. I pay uh, great tribute to Notre Dame, their coaches, their football team. They did a great job. I'm very proud of our kids to be able to come back. I thought that... Um, you know, they, uh, Notre Dame did a great job on special teams, and we let the two long returns, and that really killed us, gave them a lot of momentum, and it was tough to battle back, but our kids did it. What does this now mean for your team, winning a game this early in the season in this type of atmosphere? You're number one. We know that this is a good football team, but what does it do for you for the rest of the season? They're a very proud football team. They felt they could come in here and get it done. Uh, we knew it would not be easy. We feel Notre Dame's an excellent team against AM. They played very strong on all, in all phases of the game. So in order to come in here and get it done on their field is big time, and I think our kids deserve a lot of credit for it. I also feel Notre Dame deserves a lot of credit for the way they played today. Coach, congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Okay. Set back upstairs, Craig. Thank you, Bob. Today's Chevrolet players of the game, Eric Crouch. Surprise, surprise from Nebraska. Julius Jones from Notre Dame. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. The Chevrolet scholarship program has been a tradition for 30 years. Once again, the final score from Notre Dame Stadium. It's the Nebraska Cornhuskers 27, the Irish 24 in overtime. Coming up tonight on NBC. Don't miss the Brady Bunch movie at 8, 7 Central. And then after that, stick around for the Hispanic Heritage Awards at NBC Special. For Pat A, for Bob Wischusen and the entire crew, Frank Minervini saying so long from South Bend, Indiana.